Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn arithmetic operators. What are the arithmetic operators? And uh, how simply we are going to be applying here. Let's see the plus symbol you may see in your max and subtraction and division and multiplication and so on what the operators are there in your max you straight away apply in PHP very easily so how these are uh, simple to apply a equal to some number I can give you here like around 5 very low numbers only I am giving any number you may assign here and test yourself and 4 I am given here and uh, another one is like uh, dollar C is for dollar A plus dollar B to getting an a result we will get in dollar C so if I print like echo dollar C terminate here yes very simply we will see the output in total of uh, A plus B here just see save it and reload the 9 we are getting here very accurately so in front of you if you require any text you may apply over here and uh, you may test yourself so applying of arithmetic operators of addition see how simple if it is subtract like save it and reload wow 5 minus 4 it is 1 total we are getting by applying of this symbol only how simple it is writing of the code line and statements over here so the result is going to be storing into this particular variable that particular variable we are seeing in output so the total ultimately we are getting in here is the subtraction of the value so instead of uh, using this subtraction apply the multiplication star symbol has trick you just reload the page 20 5 4s are 20 how simple it is and uh, similar case you may try to apply like a division save it yes 1.25 the division value and now check with the modulus we can check it for putting percentile check with the output of reload it it's a 1 and similarly exponent if we are putting like a star star here we will we will get an exponent value 625 like a 2 2 are like a 2 square 3 square in this way exponent will apply in this way that's it we will get an ultimate total result in applying of these arithmetic operators. I hope it's very simple and easy lecture. We will catch you in the next lecture with assigning operators. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn assignment operators. Assignment operators. So, what are the assignment operators? Let's see here, dollar a is in a variable using equal to operator. This is an assignment operator. Left side is a variable and right side is the data value which is going to be assigning to a variable. So, very simply by knowing this, you will understand very great greatly this is an equal to is an operator of assignment operator so here when we are seeing like a one more operator i'll show you here to understand very clearly like uh, for a equal to some value i have given here correct and if i want to add something to the a itself dollar a itself how it is plus equal to is also an assignment operator if i want to add something like a 200 for this value so what is the total if, if I get if I read the A here yeah 205 how reload it see the output result is 200 plus 5 so this is going to be storing into A that variable I am going to adding like a plus equal to assigning the value of 200 more so it is going to be assigning keep on assigning the data into the A variable only using plus equal to there is a no space at all for these two operators so equal to is an operator specifically for assigning to the variable some values left side is the value like a variable and right side is the value so adding more to this particular variable we can add like plus equal to more data if you are applying like minus equal to yes it will be minus let's check it 
So out of 200, we are removing minus, it's a, I like a negative value of minus 195. So this case, you learn more and more about to the assignment operators. I'll catch you in the next lecture with the comparison operators. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn comparison operators. So the comparison operators are very simple. See, it's an a double equal to. Double equal to will entertain here to comparing something. So some a equal to some value it is assigned over here. And uh, b like uh, dollar b is also having some string value of 5. Let's see. A is also number 5, P is also string value of 5 it is assigned. Now how we are going to be comparing whether both the values are same or not. Let's check how it is possible using uh, we have in a like a where underscore dump method to check these two things are common or not. So dollar $A equal to equal to operator by applying which will be compare the two things. So dollar $B is the dollar a equal to equal to dollar b means this is equal to equal to this or not it will check let's check it first wow boolean expression it is true both are same it is saying both the values are same so greatly we are knowing the value like boolean expression it is correct or wrong it will tell you so it is correct now but by seeing it is a number and it is a data type it is string then how we can identify and distinguish these two things where the number and string are different data types in programming language when we learn comparing with the data types. So how we can identify? Yes, by putting one more equal to yes to identical it is in a triple equal to will be called as identical operator. If A is equal and if the B is equal the values and it will be compared with the same data type also. Data type means number, string, boolean, these are the data types are also same or not will identify using these identical operator. It's an important interview question also. So check now what the boolean expression will get now. Save it and reload the page. Wow. So let's see boolean expression false it is giving. So by understanding of a number and string both are not same data types. So the false we are getting here. Correct? Now let's see. Now let's see. Similarly not equal to. Yes. There is a not equal to. Save it and reload. So false means if the both if it is equal to equal to if it is true. If it is not equal to means it's a false statement we will get here. Save it and check it. Uh, so, if, the, if I am changing some value to the anyone, it, then it will be true. True statement it will give. Either equal to equal to means true. If not equal to means false. That way we will get the true false conditions in the like a condition making pass or failing. Alright. And uh, similarly we have in a greater than, less than. So, if I put greater than, uh, will it be like uh, some value only? I will put here. Like uh, some around 10. Yes. So this is a false statement. So check it, false. So if I am making like a 50, so left side, if it's a greater than means, this is the bigger value and this is the smaller value. Now it is true. Yes, it is true. So if I am making like a less than, again it is false. So it's a clear, very clear. Greater than, less than, and uh, greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to how we will apply greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. There is a no space between these two operators. Applying of this way, the comparison will go. Okay. So, uh, less than or equal to means below to the number or equal to that number. If I am putting like a 10, 10, it will be true. If I put 10, 10, it will be true. Yes. If I am changing something more the number, it will be false. Okay. 
in this case so like uh, you need to apply like uh, knowing of uh, less than and greater than all these symbols of the combinations when we are preparing if else statements these statements you will learn more and more information applying of uh, these uh, comparison operators by making the conditional statements and all you will know more examples i'll see you at next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn increment decrement operators so how we need to use a basic funda you will be known here when we are entering into like a control flow loop statements you will be get in a good idea i'll explain more there itself all right let's see a simple example we'll see about two increment and decrement operators increment operator used to increment the variable value similarly decrement operator is used to decrement the variable value increasing and decreasing all right now let's see a simple example we are going to seeing here a equal to 10 with the value we have seen here so the pre increment would be like a plus plus is there before to the variable like echo plus plus where is the plus yes plus plus and dollar a let's see the result 10 by default i have given and uh, here i am printing plus plus with the incrementing it's in a pre increment before if we have written it will be called as pre increment let's see the value is printing like a 11 so plus plus means plus by 1 1 digit is incremented by the actual correct value so it is a printing it's a pre increment will always prints with the value incremented value all right now if i written this plus plus after the if i written this plus plus after the like a variable what happens let's check save it and reload the page wow now when the value is printing then the value is going to be incrementing pre -incre pre increment and post increment so pre increment will increase the value and it will be given a output post increment once the printing is done then the value is going to be incrementing this is the very important when you are writing like pre incrementing the value or post incrementing the value are important in your programming same way same way decrement also instead of plus plus we are applying minus minus so it will be 9 in the same case it will be 10 only let's see here so 10 is the value only after the execution of the code then it will show you in output it will be decreasing later if you are using the same variable in the next statement if it is required like loop statements will always keep on repeatedly run the code where we are going to be applying these variables so about to incrementing and decrementing the operators plus plus pre increment after the variable plus plus is post increment similarly pre decrement post decrement whichever and where it is required there is a no space at all with the variable add these operators and get a great experience of writing up the code i'll show you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learning about logical operators in php programming language so here the major and uh, very important logical operators are and war yeah make it comma war and not operators these are very very important in logical thinking and logically applying of code lines in programming these are very important to know about what the functionality you are getting when you are when you are applying this logical operators let's very simply the combining whenever we have seen in our previous examples less than or greater than these things operators are applying to knowing of a two variable comparison the combinations we can make it more by using of logical operators let's say 
dollar a equal to 10 and dollar b equal to 6 two variables with the two values i have taken so by writing comparing i'm comparing with the dollar a let's see dollar sorry dollar a uh, like uh, using equal to equal to operator dollar b is it correct is it correct so let's see dollar a equal to equal to something 10 i'll give and dollar b equal to equal to some number 6 if i given this if i given this and uh, if statement like uh, else if else statements we will learn uh, many things don't worry about it uh, echo and uh, like uh, at the end of a termination of the line uh, this statement statement is true all right this statement is true similarly uh, like uh, else if it is means like uh, it is false is yes false okay so let's see here dollar a value is going to be making it's a true the value of the condition is passing true and the dollar b value here here it is in a six we have given and it is a dollar b value is six and the direct value it is six means the whole statement is going to be making true condition with the end operator will say is that either this statement this statement is true this condition and this condition is true whole statement is true then only if it is it is mo making move into the entering of this block of code and it will runs let's see what which statement we are going to seeing now the save it and run this statement is true so this statement is true condition we are getting if i am changing the value of uh, like uh, something like 5 let's see reload the page this statement is false why this condition is failing in using end operator logical end operator we need to get both conditions if both conditions are true then only whole statement is true if either any one is false the whole statement is false all right same example we'll see with the or operator let's see by changing this or operator what the or operator will say is what the or operator will say is let's see if I, it is a true like a, either condition is true either any one condition is true it will be whole statement is true okay if either any one like a, in both are false then only the statement is false and it won't come to the execution of this line of code and it will be exit from the loop statement and it will be go to the else block this print of statement is going to be print so what you need to do this state condition and this condition whenever uh, like a uh, false even you need to run the this statement then you need to use the or operator if both should be strictly true then only it should be entered into the continuity of the next statement to be if block then you can put it is in a and statement all right true like a uh, and and or are both are very very important so here you may check if i am changing this into the five means this condition is true and this condition is false even our statement will says that it is saying true or using like a or you are understanding and is different or is different logical and and or okay so if both are false like uh, i can put like a 17 here so this is false and this is false then it will be whole statement is false fail and it will go to the else block let's see so here so if it is true then only it will be entered into the this block of code will execute or else if it is fails and false the conditions then it will be go to the else block it will be runs in this particular statement okay so simple and easy so similarly using and or r c using these symbols also you may use for end operator and similarly for r operator you may like a straight lines two pipelines also you may use to get r operator result all right and a not is very simple to put in OT. That's it. Not like a not in and a not symbol also. Like a something we have seen something like a not equal to. In this case, you may apply to get the not result. Alright. And uh, 
we are going to exploring more and more in our uh, uh, upcoming lectures where we are using like if else statements and uh, loop statements okay i'll see you in the next lectures thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn ternary operator so what are the ternary operator why we require to use in programming languages so let's see here we are going to seeing about ternary operator so it's very useful when we are using nested loops or if else statements ternary operator is going to be comparing with the, a group of statement also so how simple it is the syntax and uh, following uh, statement we are going to be seeing here let's see by writing something like uh, uh, the operator pass result may be in 35 so i am making some number is 32 35 is the pass result so i am making to know the result is the, the student is fail or pass in a particular subject so now let's see how i am writing using ternary operator so i am comparing with the result like a result variable or e s u l t yes result e is greater than or equal to 40 like 40 question mark question mark c it is a like a p a s s e d past question mark it is a past or else uh, if not failed yeah if not it's a fail let's see what the result we are getting in output by running this save it and reload so failed it's a straight away we are getting in output so how the help of a ternary operator is going to be making in a condition and it's a defining the result without having if else and else if conditions so the question mark will answer based on the result it will be chosen either this or this if it is true it will be print here if it is false it is going to be print here so let's see if I am giving like a 42 is my result marks. So let's see save and run. So passed. So how the based on the condition of boolean expression true false the ternary operator itself it is making in a decision and it's giving in a throw in a output of the result. Here it may be like a string what the data you need to make it you can write yourself. So the ternary operator will help you to making in a decisions and taking a lot of time saving in programming so the conditions you may write with the based on the statements here it is called it is in a conditional statement with applying of ternary operator and the statement 1 which is going to be true statement 2 which is going to be false statement so according to the based on the condition either true it will be executed if the false it is going to be executed and here also you can put your own conditions at any condition you may put to get to our false statements it's a very simple and easy lecture we'll catch you in the next one thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture we are going to discussing about if statement with the basic syntax and uh, following statements are going to be how to write in this lecture we are going to observing so why we require to writing if statements why we require to having any conditions to be checked in programming language conditions are in if statement whenever the comparison to be with the two things if either true or false things may happening in our conversation in our real world talk or program in such a situation we require to put if else statements and if else conditions based on the different conditions we need to get in output as per our conditional statements so very often we write to perform different uh, actions for the different condition and making of uh, operators the combinations of operators or logical operators and or not this will 
may be put inside the conditions so if statement basically if statement with the only if execute some code of one condition is true then immediate responsive of next statement is going to be execute then here one more if else if this statement will be called as if condition is true then only it will be go to the like uh, it will be execute on if statement else what is the matter if condition is false what it will go else statement some other condition will be uh, run and execute that will be called as else statement and uh, it will be executes when the if condition is false if statement then it will be go to the else part if i have a more than one condition then what i need to do if else if else this part of code will be written in continuation of else if else we can make it if else if else if else if else if else if else if keep on else if statements will write till how many conditions we need to satisfy it. if we are having execute in different codes for more than two conditions will use for if else if and else statements in advance to knowing switch case switch case this switch case will be used to directly which statement we need to execute in a programming language so in this uh, example i'll show you with a simple if statement only so the next lecture onwards one by one we are going to be adding so if how i can put the statement here let's see let's take like a date or time so i may take it some like a very simple time that equal to from the date method we can take the h for hours so terminate so if let's see very simple statement only i'm writing if time if time is less than if time is less than uh, around 20 yeah around 20 so it will be executed here and uh, the statement would be printed on uh, what we can say that have a great day a simple statement anything have a great day that's uh, like a, it should be print if it is the time is below 20 only let's save it and run the program here yeah have a great day means my computer system time is it's a h means date time like a hours minute second this way it will take so hours it's a below 20 so it's almost it's a below one only it is a uh, treating here so it will be the time it should be taken like a, it's a printing when you are printing like echo you will be known what the time is going to be stored inside the variable so this is a variable i'm comparing with the 20 value and it's a making like this condition is true if it is night time if you are making after 20 hours you will get like it won't you won't get any message over here all right other than this date any like a variable also if you are putting something like a 24 here uh, let's take a, like a 24 you won't get any message over here see you won't get any message saving and uh, reloading the page so in this way if condition will help you if condition will help you to comparing if this statement is true then only you will get this statement is going to be printing how simple and how easy you are making like a very simple if else statements so write down anything by writing if condition whether if condition is true then it is going to be printing if the condition is fail what is happening nothing we are getting so in the next example we'll see how we are going to be handling else part i'll show you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to know about else statement construction. Earlier lecture, we have seen if statement, if the condition is failing, something we are not getting any output here. So if condition is true, then this statement of a code line is going to be executing perfectly. So if it is false, what we need to do? So we need to construct just very simply you see here. Just I am hitting an enter, else and open and close parenthesis here i am writing one more statement so here it is have a uh, like uh, good evening or else uh, great evening i am writing so terminate the line 
So if the statement is false, we are get, going to getting in this particular statement. So if I am putting something like a, if I am running this, if I am running this, I will get have a great day. If I am adding something else like a 23 or 23, yes, 23, save it and run it. See, if the condition is false, what happening? Automatically, this block is skipped and this else part of this code is going to be executing. In this way, you just try to write your program very simply, taking a simple examples, simple data items. You need to practice yourself to write coding exercises in your uh, programming language. By learning this type of simple things, you will be make it more master in this particular area. So write down with the simple simple variables and comparing with the if like a less than or greater than symbols less than or equal to greater than or equal to in such cases you have to practice more and more then you will understood how to write and how to expand the code lines all right i'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture, you are going to learn about if, else if, else statements. How we are going to be constructing simple statements. Let's see here. This is a very simple. Else if, else if and else. So here, how to write these things are if this condition is going to be executing. So my condition is making more uh, adding here. If it is 10, have a great morning. Okay, before 10, we can call it as morning. So, have a great morning. Like here, and uh, what I need to write like uh, else if, else if, one more condition I am adding here, which is called like a dollar variable name is less than 20. Less than 20. What I am calling, calling it as uh, have a great day here, I will put. Have a great day. Else, else one more uh, statement i'll write here for that have a great evening so take a copy of this statement and write over here great evening see when i am passing just to save it and run it it's a great morning we are getting like uh, this one this one we are getting an output okay so like uh, this condition is going to be true before 10 it is getting we are getting like a one o'clock it is the time here so we are getting this statement is going to be true so if i am passing other than this other than this like uh, around uh, 12 if i passed here save it and uh, this condition is failed and here it is true so we need to get in a total like a uh, have a great day we need to get let's see run it have a great day so if the condition is failed i have a more than two conditions if else is two conditions is over so i have more than two so what i am trying to preparing if else if the condition is verifying again if i need more else if i'll put here and put else in this way if else if else if in this way we will continue the decision making systems to understand which line of code to be execute once it is satisfied and once it is getting true so try to practice yourself in this way and get the result if i put 22 this is also false this one is also false this one is also false we'll get great evening run it this block of code is going to be executing so if i am put something around uh, two which statement great morning will get yes see how the based on the input parameter we are getting an output i hope it's very simple and easy lecture for you and uh, try to practice more and more with the different data items and comparison also yes you can put the comparisons also greatly you will get in a great result i wish you good luck i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn switch case statement in php so switch case statement is used to perform different actions based on the different conditions 
So switch statement will select one of many blocks code to be execute. We'll construct the switches of uh, many blocks of the code where we can run and execute which case of statement we are going to passing to the variable based on that uh, switching and directly it will be execute and will get an uh, output. With the construction of the basic syntax of a switch case, we have an uh, like uh, there is a keywords of a break and default keywords are also there. So how to write and how we will see and the step by step process over here. So like um, sports I am taking as a variable and here I am passing my data of uh, cricket. So let's see by writing the switch case like a switch C the basic syntax is given for uh, automatically for my code editor switch the variable. What is the variable this one. So make a copy of it and paste this sports variable what, what the data is having based on the data case is going to be executing. So here it is a case of cricket I am adding here and uh, see the break keyword. So if it is executed if a something like a code statement to be right here if it is executed immediately it will be break and it will be terminates the execution and a default if there is a no matching case is not matching for this switch other than any other data by default you will uh, straight away you send a message to the user you are not selecting a proper uh, like information over here okay so let's see uh, here i am writing something like a echo statement mm, echo yes your favorite sports is CKET, cricket so you make it dynamic also no problem okay so in this case here i am written something and just run it so your favorite sport is cricket means this like uh, this is the storing of uh, this case this variable this variable i am putting inside the case based on it is going to be switching directly cricket see here i can write one more case here many cases are there like uh, how we can make the group of programs many cases like a uh, cricket uh, football and uh, tennis t n n i s tennis these are the things are there like a uh, football favorite sport is football and uh, tennis control c and paste tennis these are the cases are available and uh, co common statement is echo oh, like you can put like a you can select anyone you can choose any one okay you can choose anyone to come over here this way you can write the program so i have a passing this case of the variable data in this cricket so it is passing here and it is getting cricket so if i am passing tennis what it will comes let's check the tennis save it and run so your favorite sport is tennis so directly based on the variable data it is switching into the program of tennis so if i'm moving like a tennis one two three there is a no case is available what happens now let's check it so it can choose any one means these of code default statement it is going and it is running so how greatly we are uh, having an experience of this uh, code execution in this particular area switch cases if your the case is not matching with the data this variable data it will be go to the run and this default action if it is matching the case directly without to con verifying the conditions it not required to verifying the conditions it straight away it will go to the case and it will run the program it will break the statement and it will terminates from there itself so that that is a great advantage is there for uh, switch case statement so whenever it is required you try to apply switch cases also i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here flow charts how to prepare flow chart and how the flow is going to be like uh, executing process steps a step by step process with the pictorial representation you will be seen in flow charts let's see here a flow chart is a type of diagram that represent a workflow or a process of a logic execution 
a flowchart can also be defined as diagrammatic representation of an algorithm. The algorithm means a step-by-step -step process to be initiating and uh, continuing the process till it's uh, making an end. To the life cycle of a process or a functionality, we make it as an algorithm, we call it as. A step-by-step -step approach is solving a task also, we can call it as algorithm. The flowchart shows the steps as boxes of various kinds and their order by connecting the boxes with arrows. From where to go and from where to the conditions to be satisfied. If condition is uh, making some query, either true or false, according to the condition it will be making a move. See what flowchart explains. A flowchart is a pictorial and picture of a separate steps of a process in sequential order. It is a generic tool that can be adapted for a wide variety of purposes and can be used for describe various processes such as manufacturing process and administrative process, HR processes, salary processing accounts processes and service processes like a call center BPO is there, IT desk support is there. How the flowchart, where it is initiating the call, who is representing taking a call and how is resolving the solving the problems and uh, what the SLA he is assigning. This all the step by step process will be there and uh, explained with the flowcharts only. A particular project, how it is going to be step by step with the Gantt chart, Pect chart and flowchart. These are the things will be prepared. Flowchart basic. For online creating of flowcharts, app.diagrams.net. A common flowchart symbols would be there and ready-madely you can make it through online like a rectangle shape representation of a process, oval or pill shape representing the start or uh, like a start and end, diamond shape representing a decision making system. And a parallelogram is representing input and output for a flowchart overall diagram. I'll show you like a basic symbols over here. See start and end symbol, oval representation, arrow which is connecting all these symbols like a where it is flow is moving. There based on that uh, uh, flow the arrow representing. And input output parallelogram process a rectangle representation of the box and a decision making diamond will indicate which decision like which way it is going to be either yes or no or repeating this process like a diamond will show see find the sum of five numbers algorithm in simple english it will be written in this way initializing with the sum equal to zero and count is zero the process and entering ivo what the numbers to be making sum and find sum plus n means like uh, n numbers you may enter to making all these numbers to putting into like a total. So count of uh, count process how many numbers are there and count if it is less than uh, 5 would like a decision if yes go to step 2 else print uh, like a input output like output. So see in the flowchart the same algorithm will be representing in flowchart see initiating step is a start same stop also the same symbol is showing start and end and uh, here it is in a process sum equal to 0 initiating uh, count is 0 and in between start and uh, the first rectangle box arrow is showing to bottom so initiating and it's going to be down so immediately it's going to be down means it's taking inputs so now you if user is entered input something sum equal to sum plus n and count equal to count plus 1 is uh, incrementing the value now it is making into down so is count less than 5 means if it is asking if it is less than count is 5 it's ask again user input. So the arrow yes it is the arrow is going to be making user requesting user input. So you see how if it is a it is a repeatedly continuous still 5 steps. If count of 5 it is a reaching up to 5 times then it will be condition is false then it will go to no print what are the sum like a 5 times of the user entered inputs it will uh, like a calculate and it will show the print sum output then this functionality is completed it will make a move to stop and it will stop the execution of the this particular program 
so this way the representation will happen so algorithm will be writing in this way flow chart will be prepared based on the requirement how to be flow is going to be in a pictorial representation will be called as flow charts i hope it's very simple and easy lecture to you for more understanding about the flow chart you study about uh, flow chart information and all and i hope you will uh, easily you will get much information about the flow charts we'll see in real world how loop statements like uh, while do while these are the loop statements are going to be written and uh, seeing the outputs we'll see i'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn a very simple and initiating of while loop statement by writing of the basic syntax and uh, how we are going to dealing while loop, while loop we are learning here why we require to use loop statements loop statements are used to execute same block of code again and again as long certain condition is true or certain condition is making true statement or false if it is a true a loop will continue if it is false loop will terminates so instead of writing repeated lines instead of writing repeated lines same code line statement will execute repeatedly with the help of a loop statement it is very highly possible so let's see while loop like uh, how the loop like a block of code is specified condition is true till the condition like uh, executing let's see with the syntax and uh, writing of a simple while loop statement by defining i'm i'm taking a very simple like uh, uh, example of uh, a equal to 1 i'm taking so whenever you are trying to practicing this loop statement you don't uh, hurriedly run the program you just write it keenly understand then you run the program otherwise it will be making a new like a uh, infinity loop will creates okay so let's see while syntax is while while is a reserved keyword all you need to understand those who are uh, like uh, reserved keywords are not going to be used as a variables so while is also reserved keyword and while we are putting something like uh, some condition while condition means dollar a less than or equal to also we may put like all the operators what we have learned we can apply here okay by making the condition anywhere in the program entire the course or entire the programs which you are going to be prepared or preparing for your like uh, implementations of the applications you need to apply for uh, all the operators okay if uh, dollar a variable i have taken so this is the variable dollar a implies one is the value is assigned is less than or equal to 10 means dollar a one i am assigned i am comparing with the value 10 means this the condition is true or false let's see dollar a is one less than or equal to 10 means it's it's absolutely true so the condition is true means once the condition is true then it will enter into the while loop so let's write while loop this is the block of code i am writing here okay if the condition is true it is going to be entering into the block of while loop block statement then the code which is written here it will be executes so what is my statement echo uh, the numbers will see what are the numbers are going to be printing uh, number on every run like on every like loop is iterating it's allow around uh, 10 times so the number on every iteration we call it as loop will continue as a circle so this circle it is like a running movements are called as iterations okay so the number is uh, the number is um, we can simply say that dollar a i am printing on every iteration then we will understand uh, what the number is going to be printing so breaking and terminate now don't run don't run if you run uh, you will get uh, inserted like a uh, uh, infinity loop so just wait 
now what i am trying to doing see if i run this it will go why it's uh, infinity loop means while it will check with that a value it is less than 10 it will print again it will run and again it is one only no so keep on runs keep on runs so what we need to do i need to increment on every iteration of a value with plus 1 for that dollar a plus plus So here dollar a plus plus means post increment I have given means it will when the code is top to bottom all the programming languages most of the programming languages top to bottom will execute line by line this line once it is completed this line once it is completed this line in that way it will execute. So here uh, like a a less than or equal to 10 means dollar a value like a variable value it is true then it is printing a value here it is printing a value here means one is the a value by defaultly we are assigned about to the line number seven so it is printing here and the come to the next line when it is come to here a value is incrementing by plus one so now a value is two again once it is completed again what happens here it will go and compare the value with the a value two less than or equal to 10 yes it is true again it will print this statement means it is the a value is 2 now again it will comes to here and uh, a value is incrementing by plus 1 means it's a 3 so on till reaching of 10 it will runs once it is a 11 then the condition is fail then loop is terminates and it will exit from here so this statement is repeatedly printing again and again if I run this now, save it and uh, run it. Yeah, refresh the page of output, which is the page loops.php. So the page localhost, our project, our page name. Okay, so refresh it. Wow, the number is one, first iteration. The number is two, second iteration. Three, third iteration. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, till ten, when it is reach, uh, like reached. When it is reached 10, it is the loop will terminate. The condition is failing, no? If it is 11, less than or equal to 10 means it's a false. So the loop is terminating. In that way, loop statements are works. Try to very, very simple example you take and practice yourself. And here, uh, what happening, the initiating of uh, this value is by default 1. So again it is coming to printing 1, here it is going to be like making plus 1. So incrementing by 1 and so on, it is running. If I am placing 100, what happens? I need not to do anything, just 100, refresh. 100 lines will print, that's it. Loop is advantage is that one only. How many lines you want to run the program, you just add the number and check yourself. So easy, you have to practice more and more by understanding these levels. Okay, so here 100 is there. Okay, let it be 100. Okay, so here dollar a plus 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 one I am given. So it is a giving like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10 numbers are coming here. So if I want to, if I want to increment a value with the plus 2, a plus equal to 2, a plus equal to 2, on every iteration a value is incrementing by plus 2. Let's see see 1 by default it is entering into the loop it's a 1 again it is plus 2 it is incrementing 1 plus 2 it is 3 it is printing 3 plus 2 5 so on it will go if you want to like uh, increment by 10 save it and run it 1 11 21 31 41 51 this way the loop is going to be running i hope it's very simple and easy lecture for you Try to practice more examples using while loop and uh, you will get in a great idea how to run and how to execute the loop statements. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. Here you will learn very simple like a do while loop statement.
so the differences between loop and do like while loop and do while is very simple and easy while we are seeing here first it is verifying with the condition then it is entering into the block of code this will be called like open curly braces and end curly braces inside the code we call it as while loop block of code so it is entering inside the block once the condition is true then it is iterating till the number what we have assigned here so it's a super easy and awesomely we have learned the things correct now now what i'm trying to explaining you here like uh, yes what i'm trying to explaining you here do while do while means once like uh, without verifying the condition it will enter into the loop then it will verify the condition thus very simply i am making this as an uh, do while let's see this while i am removing from here this while the syntax making i am removing from here and i am making put into the at the end with the semicolon with the semicolon here i am writing do sorry it's a do my program is done so first it won't verify any condition directly it will print the number straight away and it will increment the value then it will verify the loop condition similarly it will iterates let's check it the same nothing is changed if you run this you will get the same thing if i am initiating the value with the 5 save it and run it so on from 5 onwards it is going to be running the loop that's it there is a nothing will change then why we require and what are the differences between these two are very very important so if you want to initiate and if you want to run at least one time before entering to the loop statement you need to use do while statements if you don't want to enter without passing any like a condition then you may use to while loop statement directly that is the only the difference main difference between these two okay if you want to verify the condition strictly and move, make a move into the loop statement then you need to uh, use while loop otherwise if you want at least one statement to be print without verifying the condition then you need to use do while this is the basic syntax do and a statement and a incrementation like a while loop statements any while loop you may take most cases if any like with the comparing with the variable or list items you may need starting point and ending point of the conditions otherwise the loop may go in infinity loop it won't stop okay and uh, this are uh, this are uh, this all about uh, while loop statement in the next lecture we'll see you at uh, for loop thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn for loop statement with the basic syntax and how to write and handle for loop statements now let's see this is the example for do while i am here placed and now here i am continuing see these are the comments or lines are commented so we don't have any problem to write the like a new code line in this area now let's see for loop how we will write for loop why like what is the requirement of the for loop why it is to be important see for loop is also loop through a block of code only specified number of times only it will execute repeatedly the statements and this is also one of the loop statement where condition is satisfied till the lines of code is running and it will give you an output so when you have a clear idea how to handle this iterations loop like a for loop statement is happily you write more and more examples with the for loop statement only the iterations and a starting point and condition an increment and decrement will goes on a single line only that is the advantage you will get so you you avoid much more confusions of open and end break brackets and all these are the conditions you may put at single line so let's see the basic syntax of uh, for loop for like let's see initiative of the counter we need to write like uh, i equal to 0 or these are the values we can write here so i am taking dollar a initiative value a equal to 0 terminate 
and here only the second we need to write the condition that are a less than or equal to some 10 terminate okay second statement it will be called called as a like a statement 1 statement 2 statement 3 also you can call it as and dollar a plus plus dollar a plus plus we need to write at the same line and now we are going to be writing uh, like a open and end parenthesis curly braces to write a block of code for for loop so this is the basic syntax we need to write initiative counter condition counter and post increment or like a increment or decrement value where we need to assign over here so this is the block of code once it is the conditions are true it will be entered into the if block so like a for block for loop block statement like here echo uh, the number we can write like uh, the number is to print like uh, what the number dollar dollar a and break line why because break line i am taking you know all these things like if not break line we need to uh, continuously it will print the uh, side by side if we put a break line it will be line by line it will be terminates every line it will be terminate and it will be next line it will print now let's see if i run this code that's it for loop construction is basic uh, statement and syntax is this one only so now let's see if i run this what we have seen while uh, using the while loop or do while same thing we'll see all the functionalities of these loop statements are very very common but writing of the syntax is different that's it so let's see a is 0 here only we have written earlier loop we have uh, here we, it is written so the condition here it is a while loop we have verified here in the for loop this is the condition we have to verifying here and uh, increment and decrement we have written here now here in the increment and decrement so when the loop is initiated what happens here the iteration how the lo like loop is going to be executed and how the loop is running step by step process for loop is initiating a equal to 0 immediately it will be entered into the loop and it will be like a print then immediately what happens it will go here it will be incremented the value by plus 1 and it will verify the condition if the condition is satisfied a value is 1 it is less than or equal to 10 the condition is true yes it is the be below value of the 10 so less than or equal to says that it is a below value or equal value so 1 is below value of the 10 so the condition is true again it will be come to here and it will print the a value of 1 so now immediately it will goes to here incrementing the value by plus 1 verify the condition come to print here like 2 3 4 on every iteration every iteration this first time it will verify the counter print then it will go here and it will be uh, verify the condition then it will print and um, immediately it will go verify the condition print go here go here print in this way the loop is iterates continuously till what number if the last number is 10 yes even 10 less than or equal to means equal to it is 10 10 so it is printing once it is coming here it is incrementing by plus 1 means 11 it is 11 and 10 the condition is fails loop will terminate so you may see here till the 10 only we are getting loop will terminate all we can like a by plus like a plus 2 if, uh, if you want to incrementing value by plus 2 you can change like a, a plus equal to 2 yes plus uh, like equal to 2 yes you will get like a, on every iteration incrementing the value by plus 2 see 2 4 6 8 by changing this value only assignment operators we have discussed very clearly about this program uh, these are the operators only i am applying i am not uh, creating any new things here so if you are good at fundamentals you will learn many things if you are good at fundamentals you will learn many things so don't you feel other way when we are thinking like uh, taking a simple examples and uh, instructor to be like uh, explain more things not all the words what you need to do a single line you start begin with it then you will easily understanding all these fundamentals we are going to grouping step by step in upcoming lectures you may see here all the assignment operators comparative operators and uh, pre increment and decrement operators are uh, added over here and along with the string data types uh, we have a uh, use it to write 10 like uh, loop statements see what the combination are happening 
so in this way curriculum is prepared all right if you want to make it if you want to make it a multiplication table how simple it is shall we see uh, if i say like uh, something like a dollar n equal to some number is 5 okay so the multiplication table if i want to print what i need to do here like uh, see let's see very simply i can uh, make it a multiplication table dollar uh, n dollar n with uh, concatenation is required here mm, yes let me see the output first just i'm trying here oh something is a uh, wrong user showing means mm. We will stop here this okay we will stop here this otherwise it's throwing some errors now save it run it now still it is showing something dollar n uh, dollar n it's saying that something outside the loop so we'll add it inside no problem now line number 18 it is something dollar n so it's not treating like uh, this statement while preparation of uh, this what i'm trying to doing here i'm trying to making like uh, uh, multiplication multiplication table so multiplication table means 2 into 2 that equal to 4 so how it is coming 2 into 2 that is a 4 and this way we are going to getting the multiplication table I am trying to write in here ok 2 2s are 4 and uh, 2 2 3s are 6 yeah this way I want to get that statement I am going to write in here ok let us see step by step I will tell you let me take like a table first T A B L E okay T A B L E table that equal to 2 all right the table which table I want to get 2 and uh, length of the table till 10 okay 10 times I want to like repeat the loop statement so uh, what I need to more a initiative value I'll from 1 onwards I want to get in a print so dollar a I have uh, specified here the value so the multiplication table uh, to print what I need to do here dollar mm, a sorry small letter dollar a is printing with the yes dollar uh, table yeah dollar a is an a value initiative value into dollar table equal to equal to uh, yeah by pressing dot dollar a multiplication of uh, table 2 yeah dollar t a b l e table dollar table with the dot and uh, putting colon let me check first let me check what it is coming output okay t a b l e table something is throwing an error yeah save it something is expecting dot dot yes no the concatenation these are the things are getting some issues over here otherwise we will get an uh, easy output uh, just a minute here it is like uh, so 10 should be like a length we can take any way length we have taken now so shall let me specify the 
let me go over here reload dollar a equal to um, if i specified here as an output parameter now Twenty-six. Wow! Just a sec. Just a sec. Okay, we are throwing some errors. I didn't uh, find these information. So let me run. Wow! We are getting an output. Whereas, uh, unfortunately, the comment lines are there. I didn't find it. So let's see the multiplication table. It is a uh, clearly we are getting. So if you want to take any like uh, echo, if you want to like uh, the multiplication table multiplication table of r is if you want to make it tab table and from here you want to make it like a break now so let's save it and run it see that the multiplication table 2 so if i want to get the multiplication table of 12 save it i don't want to touch the code i don't want to touch the code just save it and reload wow the 12th table i am getting here very clearly the 12th table i am getting very clearly if i want to get like a, a 22 table yes just i want to change the 22 as an user input and reload just 22 table till 10 is coming now if i want to make it 20 just change the length of this table reload the page wow till 20 we are getting so hopefully you understood very very clearly this length see here also we can specify the number 20 or else we can use the variable and we are i am adding here that's it so how beauty it is so try to write yourself as many examples using for loop statements or a while loop any loop you may use to write these programs not only the for loop any loop statement you can uh, implement by writing these programs i hope so so very clear and easy lecture we have learned now so we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn for each statements. For each is also, it's a one of the type of loop statement only. Using like a reading of array items, you are going to using mostly this for each statement. So the for each statement, how it would be the for each statements. So for each, how it would be, let's see. On every loop iteration, the value is a, like a current array element of this particular uh, uh, items. It will be pointed and move one by one till the reaches of the last one. There is a no conditions we can put here. If we want, we can add it in that lectures we have seen in the upcoming. Okay. So here I am taking colors that equal to array of the color items I am taking. So, green, comma, comma based. All array items are comma based only. Uh, red, blue, any item you may put, any favorite items or anything. Yellow and white. So, terminate the loop. If I want to read, if I want to read for like uh, these uh, array items, earlier we have seen like uh, by reading of uh, print or any other statements, we have read uh, using that we have accessed. Now, how simply we are reading this, you let's see here. Using for each keyword, if I press tab, it will be created in this way. Okay, so the variable means C O L O R S these colors 
what the variable we are assigned for array item that I am using here. As key, the value means we can take like uh, anything or else we can write the simply the statement. Uh, what I What is the statement? Echo the value. Echo dollar VALU. This one. This value I am going to printing here. That's it. After printing of this value, we need to make it break. Otherwise, uh, continuously it will print. Now save this and reload the output. See, re green, red, blue, yellow, white. One by one we are seeing here very clearly. So on every array is reading one by one as a key value. So that key is going to be is a separate and the value is going to be this one. If I print as a key, which is implying that key will key, like uh, the key also it will become and it will print here. Okay. So for each every each item is going to be reading one by one. It is going to be printing in output till reaching the end. Still see green, red, blue, yellow, white, white like uh, sorry it's a white. White it is printed. If I added something a new item, uh, something something a new item brown save it and reload that's it automatically brown is coming if i am adding any item the loop will till the end it will reaches it will uh, read and it will print it's so very simple and easy lecture i hope so we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. Here is a simple coding exercise for you. Create a multiplication table using for loop statement. Like a output would be given format up to 10 times. So 7 ones are 7, 7 twos are 14, till 7 tens are 70, that would be I need to, I am expecting from you. So prepare an output how you will print using for loop or while loop or any other loop which you like comfortable. One of a uh, great lecture which is there in our for loop statement the basic to till writing of the loop statements of multiplication table. Try to understand this loop statement how it is going to be printing and incrementing the numbers and calculations are happening with the multiplication step by step process. The basic you will learn very clearly once you understood the lectures revise it and write down by implementing of this loops like uh, this coding exercise for you anyhow in the next lecture i'll show you like uh, how to write a simple uh, solution for this thank you hello everyone welcome here Solution for coding exercise. In previous lecture, I have given you a simple coding exercise for you to solve a multiplication table using for loop. So I hope uh, most of the students are uh, completed your uh, solution to making a successful result. Compare this code with you and if you are done it with by using any logic, I really appreciate you. If not done, just compare with this and try to write it up to 10 I ask you I have a specified here is an a 20 so the table you should write and practice yourself thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture, you are going to learn PHP functions. So what are the functions? So function is a block of code for a specific functionality which is created. So whenever we require to call the function, then only it will be gives the functionality to us to reusing the code. Making a large scale of problem statement, we are making into small small chunks of code too making independent functions so these functions when we require to use 
where we want to call entire the application anywhere yes it is possible to call the function wherever we require so the real power of php comes with it functions so uh, like i think so php has more than thousands of built in functions are available in addition you can create your own custom functions also we are learning now it is a custom functions how to create a function how to call a function you will be known in this lecture so here what i am trying to explaining you the basic definition about the functions built in functions already we have seen like in our string lectures so in beside a function a block of statement that can be used repeatedly in a program a function will not execute automatically itself it's required to call somewhere else it will be called an action to be performed somewhere else to be called the function then it will execute till now we have seen line by like a code lines of the statements are executing line by line in here in here we are seeing like a, it should be like a called by somewhere else if we are performing an action to calling a function then only it will be the code will be execute and runs a function will be executed by call to the function only so let's see by user defined functions in a set like a specific syntax based we need to call a name of function a name like a how we are prepared like while do while and for loop the syntax is with a built in and pre defined keywords in the same way function is also having a keyword in php function and space name of the function any name we can put by following the variables we have discussed about to how to write a variable name with the following of a rules same rules we need to follow and uh, these names either file name or variable name wherever you may take don't take any spaces if necessary to have in a space you put underscore there clear a function name must start with a letter or an underscore only function name are not case sensitive okay so where where it may be case sensitive or may not you you forget about all these things as a professional developer you need to keep on mindset like a always try to write lower case letters only without spaces so you will be get in a great idea in upcoming days okay habituate the situations make sure so let's see my function name is greet user open and end parenthesis and here we need to write like uh, open and end brace we need to write inside the statement sir statement goes here this is the basic syntax of function custom name i have created here so greet user may be capital letter you may add it your wish you can write your own if i run like a functions.php file if i run the same file in my browser let's see i won't get anything i won't get anything why because on page load functions will not run so if i want to call the function if i want to call this function what i need to do see i need to call this name of the function just see take a name outside the function paste it terminate the line if i run this i won't get why because this, there is a nothing is here inside the function so instead of writing uh, echo what i need to write um, greet user no welcome to php functions welcome to php functions save it now if i call this function see this is the name of the function i'm calling here if i call the name of the function what it will be uh, reached here and uh, it will enter into the block of code then only we'll get this statement welcome to php functions let's save it and reload the page or run me wow welcome to php functions you are able to getting 
how many statements you are written here how many uh, like uh, code lines or how many programs you may implement inside the function if you want to a specific function want to be run yes you can make it many functions and according to the function wise you can specify the programs inside the function and you call it as like additions one function you may create subtraction one function you may create common functions and uh, multiplication or any other which you want to create making small small chunks of code dividing into functions you call the function and use it so it will be called as calling a function to how to call the function yes by declaring name of the function and the line terminates so it is there no by writing in this way we are going to call the function that's it how simple it is and always you should remember it for name of the fun like function default keyword and name of the function should be right here without spaces and this name should be end with the open and end parenthesis after this open curly brace and end curly brace these will be called as function block the block of code is going to be writing here within this block we are going to writing a code line of uh, statements so once it is written here when we are calling this function it will be runs here and we are going to getting an output very simply i hope it's very simple and easy we'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture we are going to learn how to pass arguments to an function so it's a very simple and super easy lecture so earlier lecture we have seen how to create a function and how to calling a function a basic function we have seen very clearly so adding an arguments and parameters you will be known here let's see inside the grid user i'm taking like one name i'm adding one variable it will be called as it's a parameter here it is called it is parameter so to this parameter like uh, the variable is required the data no earlier we have uh, used to dollar name equal to some value we are assigned and uh, that variable if we access the data we have a uh, getting in output now in functions see when we are calling the function from here onwards we need to pass the data to the particular variable here it is called it is a parameter and once we are passing data from here the function when we are calling the function like uh, john so it will be like a called it is an uh, argument this is a data argument which is going to be when i am calling this function it is going to be this data is going to be assigning to this name this name uh, i'm going to use here inside so how i'll use here a uh, very simply dollar name welcome to uh, welcome yeah welcome save it just run it yeah welcome john so welcome john is going to be here this parameter in case like uh, you just strongly remember so like uh, strongly remember what i am trying to explaining in the function this will be called as parameter and when we are calling the function and passing the data argument data item to the function to assign this data is going to be assigning to this variable so here it is a particularly parameter and here it is a particularly argument so the lecture title is also function with arguments clear so one parameter is added and that parameter we are used inside the function so welcome john so very clearly we have seen if i am calling uh, the same function with another name yes it is possible now see greet user with the name of uh, uh, mary so terminate save it see here i am calling with the john and here i am calling with the mary so save it and run it welcome john and welcome mary it is coming so i am what i'll try to do is here uh, i'll put something a break line yeah save it run it welcome john and welcome mary if i am adding one more uh, time with the passing of one more parameter over here yes it is possible uh, what is the name i can put here ahmed 
save it reload john mary ahmed three times i am calling the function see the same function i am calling three times with the different argument data passing so how i am reusing the code again and again see this is the major advantages of using functions so one parameter i have used now we'll see name and year born year or something any other year also we can write here so how we can write here uh, like uh, name after this uh, you were born year dollar year i'm writing here and making a comma year okay so year parameter maybe number or uh, anything like uh, 1980 some number we need to pass yes i'm making a very little bit uh, 1990 and uh, 1999 okay save this now here it is two parameters i'm passing the two arguments one is string one is number so now save it and reload the page wow welcome jan you were born year is born year 1980 if you want to make it is yes you can put here save it reload it 1980 and mary you were born year is this one welcome ahmed you were born is 1999 what the arguments we are passing to the function the same is going to be assigning to this particular function greet user with the first argument and a second argument first parameter is assigning name and second parameter is assigning to that particular year and it is going to be like a inside inside the function it is going and it is a printing like a, this dynamic value and this dynamic value as mapping and assigning it is a three times it's calling the function so let's see here you need to very concentratedly uh, observe the important things what are the observed uh, like uh, important things are the parameters which we, which the order is assigned here the based on the order only you need to pass the arguments very very important very very important if you are passing first is an year and later if you are passing name it will be assigned year it is a name is year and uh, year it is going to be name it will be prints on the output so order of the arguments and here you are passing the arguments data of the order is very very important and if you are uh, accepting two parameters like two arguments data you are whenever you are passing only one argument to the function throw you an error so let's see see the two things are correct it's getting properly an output and the third one it's may throwing an error so how many parameters accepting your function according to the order and the number of arguments data items you need to pass to the function to get in a proper accurate correct result in your output all right so i hope it's very simple and easy lecture you have learned here like a passing arguments with the data arguments to the function and order of the fun like arguments these are very simple and easy all you need to practice more and more all you need to practice more and more then only you will get an accurate uh, make it comma yes so here it is a result so you try to practice with the more arguments with the date of birth and uh, phone number email all these things you can pass the arguments to the function you just make it dynamic text here with the different different your friends or colleagues or students different different times you need to call the function to have in a great experience how to reusing the code again and again with the different type of data items that will be help you all uh, like a while writing of the real world application and projects i think it's very simple lecture to you we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn about php default argument value so in earlier lecture we have seen like uh, strictly we have to define the parameters and we have to pass the values over here now let's see if i am not giving like uh, one parameter only i am going to taking now so i am removing all these three things into one parameter 
so here also I am removing this one and uh, yeah now save it and run perfect now name if I am not given name if I am not given what we need to do see here name like uh, equal to name equal to something I am giving shaker so save it and here I make all the function let's see what happens run it wow even I'm not passing the variable here it is a John is going to be passing then the John only will prints okay and if I'm not passing any argument to the function whereas it is accepting one parameter it is there so even it is printing like a default parameter the default value so the default value whenever we are not passing to the function the default value if we defined anything so that name will be taken care and it will give you an output so adding like a default parameters with the argument values also you may add in your function so here I am given myself my name is here for default as an argument value so if I am not passing line number 12 you may clearly observe greet user if I am not passing any data argument to the function even it is taking default value and it is printing welcome to shaker alright so very super easy lecture so whenever you are not clear to passing the data arguments to the function so such a time you can use this default functionality to your application I hope it's very simple and easy lecture. We'll catch you in the next one. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn functions written keyword how to apply and how to will get in a written value from the function. So let me check by writing all the things by removing these things we are writing a function just a simply function name of the function add addition we'll see very simple like addition add you may take or sum of two numbers you can take any name okay and uh, I need to take like a two variables over here I'll declare it no problem so in sum in sum I make a integer number only otherwise uh, if we pass the strings like uh, it will throw you in errors so I don't want to confuse you much more so the data type also in specifying here it is an integer a comma integer b so here what I need to take sum we need to do inside here so sum equal to sum uh, yeah in the sum also you can take or else uh, c we can take equal to dollar a plus dollar b terminate so r e t u r n written keyword to use dollar c terminate yes in the same line here also we can write the written keyword if it is a very detailedly i am separating a new line okay so what happening here when i am passing this line is also not required yes when i am passing when i am calling this sum function i need to pass two arguments with the data value of a and b if i am passing two values comma based values it will be go here with the calling of a sum function name of the function is sum and it will be go to called here and assigning here the two numbers and it will be come to inside the arithmetic operation sum is applying here storing the result into c so when the store is in stores the result we need to get back from where i am calling i need to see the print so how I will see the print by using written keyword we are getting back the result from where we are calling the function so see by writing here it's echo like uh, I will pass the I will pass the sum of like uh, two numbers these two numbers I'm writing here like let's say five plus four I want to pass these two numbers that equal to I want to call inside here I want to call inside here the name of the function is sum here it is a uh, two values of 5 comma 4 
okay two arguments only no five comma four and here i'll write like uh, if i want to make it more i'll apply for break line also one one is enough not require for two terminate so, yeah so run this if i run this what happening here i am calling the function and i am passing five comma four let's see five comma four plus equal to the total i want to print here let's see whether, whether it's uh, printing or not yeah we are getting an error so where uh, we are uh, did a mistake where we did a mistake five yeah, here it is not required save it yes five plus four equal to nine so how beauty it is coming so take a line of copy of this code paste it five comma something like a ten we can put any number you may take five comma ten save it reload 15 how beautifully we are getting the result how beautifully we are getting the result so n number of times you may call the function with the different different values so these two numbers are going to these two numbers are going to assigning a and b here it is applying for arithmetic operator of uh, sum storing the result this result we are throwing out from the function the result val written value written keyword is throwing out the value and it is going back to where we are calling the function and it's sitting here so we can also like uh, take this sum value into some other variable and we can print it in other in, in other terms how can we write here uh, let's say like uh, dollar tot equal to sum of um, something like a four comma four so echo dollar tot terminate so if we want to write anything here you can we can write so here see four comma four eight is coming the sum of four comma four is going to be calling here and this return value is coming to storing to our local variable and this if i am printing the eight is total it is printing here so how simply if we want to call the same procedure if we want to make it custom format way we can write in this way okay so this is all about written values anything any logic you may prepare inside the program of a function if you want to get output yes you can write anything and you will get output using written keyword it may be like uh, you may call it as it a uh, string number or any other data type you may use here all right i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn call by value. Call by value and call by reference are very important topics in functions. So whenever using like uh, passing and arguments by values, we need to focus and uh, call by value here. So the arguments are used by the values directly whenever we are passing to straight away as a arguments. Let's see, in this example, you may clearly observe it see in the function sum i am passing directly this values it may be the direct values like a 5 comma 4 yes we can get the result set over here so the this is called as a passing argument by value so copy of the value is used to the function variable which passed the direct values cannot be changed anywhere so the function argument passed by value and uh, it will be adding inside like a mapping to the parameter and it will be called and uh, used directly there is a no references call by values or arguments up to date as a variable automatically it is adding to parameters those are the parameters are here and values are passing from here this will be called as call by value directly in the next lecture we'll see the reference call by reference it's very super easy we'll catch you in the next lecture Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, 
you are going to learn call by reference so the call by reference is nothing but very simply we are going to somewhere else the variable value is assigned that variables we are mapping here to passing to the function so how simply we are passing let's simply see here like let's say x is a variable 5 and dollar y is another variable which i'm going to passing like 3 these x y i'm passing here that's it like these x comma dollar y call by reference these are these will be called as reference values i'm passing to the function 5 comma 3 it is 8 we are getting anyhow we are getting the value output so these may be here i am showing this may be the reference values you may get the variables from the different sources you may get not to be the direct values earlier examples we have seen call by direct value and by call by references are the parameters which are having and the like a variables which are having a values from some other place it may be the numbers directly coming here or somewhere else you may get these values from different places in a dynamic way yes all these possibilities are there so whenever you are calling this address location not, not direct the value you are passing this address location you are calling by reference from this variable so the referencing of this variable and which is going to be assigning to another variable as a parameter yes it will be done in programming language passing by reference to the arguments update a variable value here also so accurately 5 plus 3 is a value so you are getting in a total maybe different different variables you may map here as a arguments you can pass it so the memory location where it is stored that will be shared to the particular variable and it will be used the value which is assigned to this particular variable this will be called call by reference so i hope it's a, these are the two lectures are very simple now we are making and moving into the next lecture thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn POST method. Super global of dollar underscore POST. See, this is also one of the method to collect the data from HTML input parameters. So how we are going to using and uh, when the form is submitted by the user action, which we are going to be requesting the data and we will collect by using the request method if it is POST maybe small letters or capital also you may write here and if it is matching instead of request what we will write here post we will write P O S T. that's it this is the name of the text box as you understood to writing this is a text box let's see uh, defining this I'll show you uh, like uh, we can simply make it a HTML form yes form and inside the body uh, inside the body we are going to moving this code into the inside the body at last right php code i can add here inside the body so super now i am preparing here like a form that is a form tag making form tag here it is an input like a text box one text box only i'm writing so what is the input input type text name is name okay so the name is name enough so here like input text box name if i'm presenting save it see here why something it is showing in this way is there anything else is missing over here Uh, no save it reload mm. yeah here it is the one tag is added save it reload it yes so name if I want to present something a label uh, name directly I am taking a name okay so reload it name it is asking so this is the box is here 
So when I'm entering here, it should be accept here and it should be print in this place. So echo dollar name. If I want to read the dynamic parameter and if I want to print the name what it is added here uh, with the text box also I need no like a submit button. Yes. So inside here I'll add a button mm, input type submit. Yes, you know, save it, reload. Yes, submit. Okay, so when I submit this, something I need to get in output there. Uh, see, let's uh, like uh, uh, PHP submit. Okay, something is not coming. Yes, why the form is not filled with the actions? So the method we need to call it as like let's see, uh, action action is very important. Action is uh, what is the action? self we can put without leaving uh, empty strings only it will be called as self and method we can call it as post method okay save this and now you can submit with uh, php submit oh something if the request to server method is a post so it's not coming why the server request method PHP we have written and the post method is happening so we need to correct the something so POST and action also will write something like uh, this way mm, within a PHP tags yeah within a PHP tags dollar underscore server the variable is PHP underscore self php underscore self you may put or may not like by default uh, actions also will take save it and bhuvan submit wow it's coming and uh, php submit so php is coming so how it is coming this is the form data this is the form data and uh, when i am submitting with the action of self you may see here server global uh, uh, variable it is taking self inside the form only it will be submitted so the method is post so when i am feeding the data into this particular test box when i am pressing this uh, submit button it is going to be verifying server method is requesting of a post method if it is matching if it is matching this post variable is uh, coming here and assigning here the data is going to be printing this variable how super easy how super it is yeah shaker submit shaker we are getting so the same way dynamic parameters and dynamic forms will write in upcoming lectures okay we'll catch you in the next lecture with get parameter thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn about two like a get method so get also can be collect the data from the set of URLs and uh, set of the functionalities which we have uh, implemented inside the program so let's see I'll show you a simple and very simple functionality over here to getting something instead of a post we have seen to like uh, interacting with the server with the data in our previous lecture to get is, uh, I'll show you a very simple by writing of uh, PHP statements and all. I'm removing all these things here and let's see. A tag for href, href, href reference to get data like get.php, some form is there, you may assume it. And uh, like id with a question mark, id. And some value if it is there we are passing with the ID something value okay so to handling such a information when we are passing by clicking this information of this button how we can uh, like uh, get yes by writing this a get data there is a get form is not there here so in our next uh, upcoming lectures we'll see about see when I press this when I press this it will be going to like a get.php and id 
it's a 12 it is moving into calling so there what we need to implement inside the get.php form to collect this data using get parameter okay hyperlinks and uh, all the data links whenever we need to pass the parameters we'll use the get super global so the next lectures we'll see like how to handling like a form handling and all these informations are there while uh, implementing of uh, CUD, uh, CRUD informations there I'll show you very detailed information about the get I'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture form handling with the methods we are going to seeing here very simply I'm going to presenting this data let's simple like uh, I'm going to creating a form like a two forms how the data is going to be interchanged and exchanging specifically we are focusing with the action and uh, post method we are seeing very basic very basic so advanced designer one form this time going to creating like uh, one new form which is called like uh, REG or registration all right so REG dot PHP is a one form very strongly remember two forms we are going to creating here this is in a HTML form registration is my title and inside the body I'm creating uh, very simply I'm creating form tag yes this form tag so yeah this is the way we can see yeah inside the body we need to write and implement the form tags and all okay name parameter input type text and the name is name only okay and here by making of understanding of splitting of the line we we'll put this one and this is the reg form so i want to run this form let's see how it would be so name parameter is here and uh, one more parameter I'm going to write like a uh, take a copy of this and uh, email okay email phone whichever parameter you require you can put it and type also you may put like email also is there input uh, like a HTML uh, element attribute so name and email two things are completed if I refresh it will come this way you want more space you can take uh, one more break line so it is now this okay one more break for um, action action for input type submit input type submit register get all the information you may add if you press here something will happens okay now form we need to put like a uh, action we have seen like action in earlier PHP self so either PHP self or we can specify a page where we want to push this input text box data items so here method we can use like a post so now I'm going to creating one more page which is welcome like a greeting of these two name and email I'm, I need to read these two input parameters to be read in another PHP form how it would be let's see now very simple so new file I'm creating again so welcome.php welcome.php oh the form is already there so no uh, data.php I'll put okay data.php so here inside the data.php what I'm trying to write in here uh, very simple thing I'll write here to first we need to receive these parameters how we can receive yeah by adding here PHP tag so the question mark question mark PHP and uh, question mark and so this is the PHP tag we have written great now like uh, taking a variable local variable we call it as name dollar underscore post method to what is the variable name here post what the name I have written inside the post is very very important so another one is email email so these are the local variables 
these are the local variables these are the names from this registration PHP input HTML text boxes this is the name it is name and the input email ID name is this name so name and email these two are I'm writing inside the like uh, data like accepting this variables this uh, input text box data items I am ac accepting here and uh, assigning to our local variables here if I written like uh, echo dollar name we will get here echo with uh, some break terminate echo dollar email terminate save it now let's see our form is ready now what we need to do go to reg form here you need to specify inside the action data.php so the data.php this data.php i am assigning inside the action of the form so now let's see when i press the action button while filling the data here in the output and filling the data and submitting the action button the action with the post method it is going to be redirecting to this form and here it is accepting using of a post method of a text box controller name and email according to the variables it is assigning the data and here I am reading the data what uh, what the data is available here so we can write here like uh, uh, the names we can put in this way welcome to uh, here also we can write the email and all many data okay let's save it and reload uh, some name test at gmail Why, while filling the data when we press the submit what happening let's see submit wow welcome to shaker test at your gmail you may write here something by taking of uh, this uh, common text take a copy and paste over here um, your email is save it reload it yep your email is test at gmail.com so how beauty it is so when we are feeding something here it is in a dynamic data and when I press the button it is going to moving into the URL you may find here data.php it is moved and what happening inside the data.php it is assigning into our local variable and uh, according to the name of the controller of HTML controller this one strongly remember the name of the text box is name and email these two are receiving here using with the post parameter so the post name is name variable and email is for email variable and we are reading here in the data.php form with the post method we are happily uh, like uh, reading the data from one page to another PHP form so this is very highly important you need to practice these pages to making complete dynamic environment if you want to learn more and more you need essential to handle such type of forms so in upcoming lectures also we'll use the same type of activity while applying for database interactivities I'll see you at the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn date time how to handle date time and how to work with the date time you will be learn here so date time form I am creating using PHP so here by writing something like uh, open and end parenthesis of uh, PHP scripting yes now the form I am going to accepting date time here to run output now let's see D D D M M Y Y these are the digits we are going to be taken care about to get a date in PHP so let's see very simple example we'll write like uh, today today to get in a today's is like a date how we will get today and making here date method is there ready made date add date create date format date modify these are all the things are available 
so date format which format we require so let's see very simply i'm taking like a capital y slash forward slash m forward slash d d for date m for month y for capital y for year so putting this and making a break line of uh, this statement and terminator yes let me check with the, by running this any error no today is the date is 24 2022 so how simply we are getting if you need any custom standard format like a year would be uh, like a day would be here and year would be here maybe depends upon your country you just put your wish and if you don't want to put like a, this a slashes you may take like a, this one yes you can take it reload how the format is coming the universal standard format is uh, this one most commonly the database is also following the date month year format will follows that one we are considering here okay and if you want to make sure to put dots or any other formats yes you can usually you may apply it there is a no problem so here y is representing this year and m is representing month of the year and d is representing day of the day the like particular the month of the day so in this case how simply you are going to be applying okay now let's see most of the websites you may observe to making like a copyright years so how we can set the time and uh, years of the copyrights super easy maybe 2007 like uh, some year it is established like uh, uh, we may put like uh, 20 uh, 27 echo we can write something like a copyright information would be like a echo of uh, this one 2007 to at what constant uh, we require this information mm, we can put like uh, making of uh, this take a copy over here paste all right if it is not coming what we need to do by putting in this way we need to write the statement of the program now terminate this and let's check it oh it's throwing an error so what we need to do we'll put something yes and terminate this save it and run now according to your requirement according to your requirement you may put how you are going to be accessing this method just try yourself yeah will it be works and let me run this no so yeah no even now it will work i think so echo direct date it is not taking reload something what happening here okay this code line is not terminating with the break line that the code line is not terminating with the break line so strongly remember and uh, 27 with the concatenation of this method let's save it iphone check it so this it is required and uh, when i refresh this one it is coming now so i don't want this date only year is enough yes see uh, all rights are reserved at copyrights save it you need not to touch a line of year on every time it will comes on every year automatically based on the system date time it will modifies i hope it is very simple and easy similarly if you want to get a time hours and uh, minutes and seconds very easily you will get how you will get let's check it like uh, let me check over here 
Yeah, by adding break line, here I am adding a break line. Will I get any error? Yes. So I need to put something in this way. No, 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 no. This is like uh, not accepting even. So again, I need to write something like uh, echo and that the time is the time is if you if you want to access the time date of inside you can put like a small h small i and small seconds let's check it save it and run yeah i'm removing this one yeah save it and check it the time is 2 49 32 pm the server what the time is there based on that it will take the time okay so if you want to get date you can use this if you want to get time you can use this to get in your system in programming language in python directly whichever you want you can directly apply and you will get in your system program may require current date times and the date formats and time formats in many places when you are registering the records you require the date times and uh, all you will learn one by one to having like a, by assigning a to your local variable and you need to use it so the next lecture will catch you thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn about include and require so here we will try to conclude about the include requirement and next lecture we will see about the require so here php include and require require is a two statements it is possible to insert the content on one php file into another php to reuse the code from one php form to another form so here let's see include and require statements identical except upon failures so require will produce in a fatal error if the file is stopping and uh, if there is a no script is found whereas include will only produce a warning and script will continue to the execution of the next steps even the include file if it is not found so a simple examples we'll see one by one let me create a form of a home page like a menu items I'm going to create it. Let's say a simple example, like a save the form new form, menu.php. So the menu.php I'm creating here. Let's see menu.php. So empty is here. So here I'm creating like a question mark PHP and question mark terminator. So inside here I'm adding like a echo of a href links we need to create or else uh, anything anything you may create it echo within a single quotes we need to write something like a text of href a uh, hr ef hreference links that equal to uh, here we need to specify the path of the file uh, something like a home home dot php this is the file I'm creating and uh, here we need to close this and uh, sorry not this yeah this and home and making end of a link this a tag we need to end here and another one uh, we need to write like uh, something courses we can write something like courses we can write by I'm taking this href link with this one comma paste 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 so here it is services page so menu items just I'm simply adding menu items products so page name assuming that these are not uh, available contact so page would be there like a contact so save this and check here so home service product 
uh, and contact these are the pages are available like uh, these are the menu items are available over here so this is the page i'm having only the menu items that's really awesome now let's see if i want to make to create a new page of new file and uh, this page name i am creating like a home.php another file so here i am creating one more another file like uh, it's a html so welcome page this is an html welcome page i am preparing here so here what i am trying to doing i want to include the menu of that page so how i will include just using here let's see uh, by putting uh, by writing something like php tag yeah here i'm writing uh, include keyword c l u d e include uh, single quotes menu dot php form i'm going to adding over here all right save it and when i run this uh, home dot php let's see save this and making into the new url mm, home dot php wow so when i opened home dot php i have added included this menu and when i open the home dot php the same menu page what the content is having it is going to be like uh, accepting here so include is the using of include of different pages which the functionality if we want to add inside into the new page if i am if i if i want to continue over here like uh, h1 uh, let's take it uh, we can write our own code mm, new services and courses let's save it here it is applied here the new like uh, services courses and all the new things we can write here this page is coming from menu and home.php this is and if we want to add like any html tags or any program we want we can create it new um, projects for beginners save it and load this is the paragraph how beauty it is so the include is using either database connections or any class files will use to yeah, like uh, integrate to the main form to the reference forms as like uh, using like include statement and adding this the name of the form really awesomely will get an accurate result all right in the next lecture we'll see about required. thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture i'm going to explain you something like a require keyword so instead of uh, include i'm changing into the require now just see reload it it's properly absolutely it's working with the replacement of include to require yes so if i am not if i if the file is not there no file dot php if the file is not there i am specifying the file and i am just testing reload we'll get require no file is not found fail to open the stream no such file or directory it will throw you in a fatal error and it will stop the execution have you observed here and if i am placing like a include just save it and reload so it will throwing an error even it is continuing the execution of the form this is the major difference between include and require whenever we strongly recommend you to use include instead of rather than require if the frameworks you are using you just try to use require as a uh, to call the external files into in your file like a php program all right and uh, see using require is the when the file is required for by the application mandatorily and include when the file is not required and application should continue even the file is not found when you are written so inside so whenever you need to use like include statement okay most of the core php lectures you try to add include statement to run continuation of the project successfully and if it is the mandatory required just use the require that's it I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.
Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this session, you are going to learn about PHP sessions. Sessions is a way to store information in a variable be used across multiple pages unlike a cookie. The information is not stored in the user's computer. It won't store the user's computer. It will be stored in server session variable itself. But where you can access entire the project, any form in the project, if you are declaring the session like a session variable, you can able to access there. So what is PHP session? When you are work with a multiple applications like an application which is an enterprise or uh, multiple forms, you need to open and do some changes and you close it. This make like a much like is it? It's like a session like a user is entering something once he is logged in, he may see the welcome page or any application accepting page or submitting form page. One is trying to getting sign out till the he is uh, about, about to do accessing all his own information like an email id is there once he is entering email id he will see the inbox outbox sent items and compose mail these are all the activities will he can do once he press the logout or sign out the page will automatically redirecting to the entering into the username and password it will be called as it's a complete life cycle of the session a project the session it is going done happen and more secure sites like a bank sites and these are the sites are having a particular session timeout also once the user is entered maybe is a putting some ideal time the session will automatically be uh, like uh, destroyed the keyword we can call it as destroyed and it will be redirect to the username by entering of the username and password again and it will be entered into the transaction page session variables solve the problems to store user information to be used across multiple pages username address and user id if any information you want to create as a session variable, you can access across the pages. So let's see. Very simply, we can see how to start a session and uh, how to like access the session parameters. We'll see here in simple example. So session will be started by declaring of built-in method. Session, S-E-S-S-I-O-N. Session, uh, where it is, S-E-S-S-I-O-N. O N underscore start yes by declaration of this after this we can create the session variables so whenever you need to uh, which form you need to access the session parameters you can write in this way so you need to define like a session variables by calling global variables that is S E S S I O N session with the expression of name of the variable like a name session variable also will be created in this way equal to some data we are going to be adding in this maybe dynamic variable or uh, static data you can put over here name i have added here mostly name and uh, user ids we can put some my user id is would be like number i can call it a session variable user id user id see two session variables i have created using global like a uh, global declaration of uh, this uh, like uh, i can say that uh, super global super global variables of a dollar underscore session anywhere anywhere in the page you may declare directly this session variable once you prepared and writing this statement to initiating the method in this particular page then you need to write in this way so if you want to access if you want to access these session variables uh, how you need to access these are very simple it may be in the same page or it may be in the different page you can get the session variables how you will get the session variables let's see the simply writing echo uh, i may write this one yeah save it and run it so the session variable what is inside we are able to get in here it may be in the same page or different page also you will get this session page for there you need to write in this and you can write the echo you will get there just let me let check with the secure uh, yes i'll do one thing uh, i'll remove here and uh, i'll create a secure page just uh, file new save as secure underscore page sorry secure page dot php so here what i'm writing php tag is initiated 
yeah step by step all the process we'll see so if you want to like a secure page so I'm taking this URL into the new tab I'm writing secure page dot PHP nothing is here so I'm if I want to access here this uh, like uh, earlier page uh, this variables to that particular page how I can access how I can access in the secure page let's see session start you need to define the session start whenever you are accessing and creating session or variables and accessing the session variables now if I want to access the session variable of this name and ID let's see like a dollar name local variable I have created and I'm pasting like a session variable just let's see if I am like a making echo uh, dollar name if I run this secure page wow I am getting in a secure so here it is a creating a session variable in this secure page by starting the session I am able to reading this variable information storing into the local and here I am printing same thing same thing I can apply into my email also why because I have created email also no email email reload yeah notice undefined email e m a i l m a i l yes email line number nine something something it is throwing an error why here it is a name oh sorry it's a user id i'm really sorry about it so user id user id user id save it and reload so here it is if I am applying like break line we will get so initiating by user entered username and password he needs to start with the basic data of user ID and password which we can carry forward enter his session if any requirement to save the data into the database performing records and all we will use for session objects only so these are the topics are very very important in real world application development so strongly remember whenever you need to update the session yes it is possible to update the session also so all these things you will get in a great idea to practice more and more how you are accessing and how you are doing performing these session variables i'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture we are going to like a uh, reading a file which is already created so very simply we are going to reading a file how it is easy let's see here uh, just I'm taking my PHP tags over here and uh, inside the PHP I'm writing something like uh, the filing of the code like a uh, dollar my file that equal to f open yes f open with the file name what is the file name here it is uh, earlier it is created like uh, my file dot txt yes that one only will go my uh, like a file name is my file dot txt and the method we need to use for here like read or we can read okay save it and let's check echo dollar my file terminate save it and here you need to read file hit enter a resource like a dollar three something something is uh, throwing an error uh, let me check like uh, w with the id no the file my file my file dot txt it is there and maybe it is requiring like a, if you are having any errors maybe it's a trying to get an a, like a code to run like a, granting the permissions also you may have a, some issues over here if your file is having like a fully accessed permissions then definitely you will get it all you need to do check with the, your file and the properties you have to grant this file properties to access then you will get immediately the content which is a 
uh, which are having in your file it will be displayed here in that way you can read and uh, write the files in the external resources okay i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how to upload an image to php application so it's a very simple and easy lecture i have a design and prepared for you so first i am taking upload file.php form and here it is a prepared form with the action form is ready madely created for yourself with the, all the source code i'll explain you how it is done why because the lecture is taking much time so very quickly we'll see in action we have a prepared like upload.php this is the form what we have written i'll explain you all the things and a post is method and nct type this is important multipart or form data whenever you are dealing with the images or any external files which are going to be uploading into your server this is also in form tag you need to add it and select an image to file like upload is in a text and input type is file you need to take whenever you need to take in a file uploads you need to take file and id and the name are common and input type file like a submit the text which is adding here upload image so once it is done the form tag action like a design of html form you will be get an output of this output if you want to make it design more beautification you can make it more beautification okay once now let's see so what our code is saying here upload so the where the document like folder is required to upload an images in the project so what i have tried to done here it is my project i have created uploads one folder over here so it is an empty uploads is in a folder i have created so let's see here so the target directory a variable i have taken and upload where the folder is located at the project uploads with the slash after folder the directory it is going to be uploading the images okay and and the next form next one is target underscore file the target directory and the base name of the file which is the upload controller we have written something in the in the form of input to type it is file and the name is file to upload and id is also file to upload this controller we are writing here and with the name of this file which is the name it is also required to upload a file okay upload is okay means one like a, a simple variable base value we are taking uh, why it is taking and uh, all you will know okay it's like a flag we can say so image file type is string lower it is a path information this target file with the path path information extension this uh, built-in method which the file is having file extension maybe image pdf document which one to identify to require the uploads so check the image is actually image or fake image for that we need to implement this method see it's a called it is in a mime type checking the content if it is saying that jpg and a file is a, like maybe word document or something it won't be no use to saving in our database so we need to verify it is a, whether it is an actual image or not we can check by using this information this function okay once it is done if the image is already available or not it will be checked with the if condition if file exist method is built in and the target file sorry file is already available upload is zero see every time the upload flag is changing if file is not an image it will be uh, turned into zero and if it is a file is already exist it is turned into updated into zero and uh, it's a large what is the file type and file size we need to put based on that it is required to i just i'm making a more number to upload a common image and allow certain formats jpg which formats we are going to be accepting to upload in our application it may be jpg png or jpeg if you want you know like make the more uh, extensions by making and symbol and uh, add more extensions okay and gif also pdf doc many thing you may add sorry for the jpg and these formats are not allowed if it is then in other than okay like uh, if any like uh, if the if such error is appeared upload is zero again it is turning into the zero now here it will be checks at the final upload if it is upload is zero means it will says that sorry your file was not uploaded if it is other than zero means one means this tag is one means 
file is ok then it will go to the upload then see if it is not zero means it's else part ok so it is moving file to the file controller file upload controller temporary name with the target file where the target file the uploads folder is the target file so echo file base name and has been uploaded successfully message you will get in the output let's check by writing in this all the code you may test it yourself uh, we'll test in the run here so this is the output file so choosing a file in desktop I am searching an image selecting open now we need to click on upload image so let me see here my where is my directory yes here is a directory let's take side by side yeah upload image so the image is uploaded successfully so image is appearing here awesomely we are uploading an image with ease of code so take a code of screenshots and uh, write down yourself by implementing uploading an image into the server very very easily so these are the verifications are also there for uh, uh, check the file already exist verification and uh, capacity and the type of extensions these all are also required to upload an images to our PHP project so this is the first form and that is a code form any form any image you may try to upload into your project directory all right i'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here oops object oriented programming we are going to knowing about uh, more details about the object oriented programming and its advantages what is oops oops stands for object oriented programming earlier days uh, procedural programming is about writing procedures or methods that perform operations on the data in object oriented programming is about creating the combination of both data as well as methods are going to be making a combination and restricting and maintaining of the relations of uh, these uh, parent and child relations and encapsulation methods and uh, like uh, access modifiers applying these are our combinations or the pillars are added in object oriented programming so object oriented programming uh, has several advantages over procedural program so whoop is faster and easier to execute it provides clear structure of the program and blocking of the codes Oop helps to keep the PHP code dry, don't repeat yourself and makes it code easier to maintain and modify and debug where the block is getting issues or where the block is striking or any logic issues. You straight away you go over there in the block and you need to find the resolution there itself and Oop makes to for like uh, possible to create full reusable application with less code and shorter development time. It's also save you a lot of time once you prepared and uh, implemented a function which you are going to be reusing in the class objects. Oops concept we have one more real world example called Vora write once read anywhere means you are prepared a class objects. These class objects means methods anywhere in the application you may call it and reuse the same if it is the same functionality you want to write like uh, perform an action. You call the same method and reusing keep on so by applying these principles we will save more time on application development even less time you will vast application development will be done in your future references so i hope it's very simple one by one concepts we are going to discussing by creating classes constructors objects inheritance all will see thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to create a class and its objects. And instantiating a class and how to call the class objects. These are the simple things we are going to learning now. See class is nothing but a template for objects and the object is instance of a class. So object is instance of a class. 
Class is a blueprint for a program or a structure of a program. So let's see. By writing a class definition and uh, writing a class is very very simple. Uh, I'm taking a new file with the name of saving this file name as class dot php. All right. From the scratch, I'm initiating these things. Strongly remember. Yeah my class is done now what I need to do just go to XAMPP server and uh, start the services yeah start Apache and start my SQL minimize this one and uh, in HT docs you know that uh, my project name is my project so here in the browser localhost my project and uh, class.php is my file so this one if it is I'm accessing this one okay now super easy now what I'm trying to do in here if I want to write a class how I need to write a class very very super easy let's see defining a keyword called class keyword class for demo this is a comment line what the class name we are going to write in here and a class and function construct all are coming from this like uh, this is a sublime text editor I am removing all these things above above is a class like a comment line only so class I am writing a keyword class fruits okay fruit and open and end parenthesis we need to write in this way and the statements are going to be statements goes here this is only class declaration and writing the class keyword using a class keyword and the name of the class and strongly remember here first letter of the class name should be on capital then only you will distinguish with the class methods and uh, class names all right now here one by one very simple things I'm going to writing this is the class only open and end parenthesis if inside anything if you are written it will be called as class object or class property it will be called so and uh, there is a big difference you need to understand earlier lectures we have uh, learned like about functions creating function calling function with the parameters and all the same function if we written inside the class the same function if we written inside the class will be called as method the differences between function and method is the this one only there is a no functionality change there is a no nothing will be changed but calling of the function will be changed here I'll explain here okay if we've written the same function inside the class will be called as function so here I'm taking class properties let's see properties the one I'm using keyword of public if we are not used any uh, keywords means it will be called as public only even I am using why because uh, like uh, many details you should know here many details you, you should know here okay so here two properties like uh, variables we have uh, discussed earlier that is the variables you may call it as now here it is called as class properties okay class properties and a function I told you the function will be called as method here so function and the name of the function is set underscore name so passing of uh, this parameter and uh, defining of the function setting of the values this keyword will used here means this keyword is used here means it will be treated as uh, this time and this object only other than there is a nothing okay so setting of this name this keyword and the name is going to be setting like if any custom name if we want to set for this method we'll use this method okay and uh, and uh, if, if and one more method I'm going to like a function one more method I'm going to creating uh, like a function uh, get underscore name so what uh, what is the name we want for getting a name we don't want any parameters so this keyword like a written keyword I'm using let's see when we have seen written value from the uh, what it is 
return value from the function no same we am using when i am getting the name setting the name we are uh, sending the function to calling this one and getting the name directly we can call the this uh, get method then we will get immediately the value which is available inside the class so two methods any method like addition subtraction any method you may write yourself greet user any name now how to access these uh, methods how to access these methods are very very important in object oriented programming classes now let's see how to access this like how to call this method directly by writing set func set name function or get name function it won't come now it won't come now so go to the outside this is the class like braces of a class go to the outside here you need to make it like a apple local variable equal to using new keyword call the like a class name with like it is accepting like a one parameter so that parameter we need to pass i'll show you terminate and uh, now how we need to like uh, call the parameter let's check that local object and uh, set underscore name yes this one set name set name is accepting apple one parameter set name this is the method is accepting one parameter so i need to pass the argument to this parameter like this method so this is the local object when i am typing local object i am i am able to access this function why this is the class instantiation declaring of the local object class instantiating so this class when i am instantiating using new, key, new keyword all the class functionality is coming and is sitting inside this object it will be called like this is the variable till now we have called in the variable in object oriented programming we call it as these are the objects this is a local object i am getting all the functionality from the class and in adding inside into the this particular object object name would be anything you can create it may be apple or it may be obj or it may be obj1 or it may be which is not in reserved keyword which is not in reserved keyword okay so how we can get this uh, information how we can get the information let's see sorry it is an obj yeah so here uh, to get an uh, information echo and uh, we need to call like uh, dollar obj of obj of uh, method name is get underscore name terminate save it and reload the page wow we are getting apple with the help of see in this method we are going to setting a name for uh, like uh, this variable we are sending a name and it is setting this variable this keyword means this keyword means a uh, temporarily it is using for this reference perfectly without distracting and disturbing to the functionality it will setting the name then we are getting the name by calling this uh, this method without parameters when we are uh, calling this method the name which is already assigned it is returning the value like uh, this is an apple so writing of the class class properties and uh, set get methods are introduced here so first method is setting name and the second method is getting name so any functionality instead of writing these two names you may add you may get the return value or uh, passing the parameters to this and all are very common and we are going to be adding inside the class that's it okay and accessing of these class methods you need to instantiate the class with any of your own local object so this is the object in myself and uh, placing the object and uh, arrow making this arrow and here you need to specify name of the function which is the function which is there like a get name and you need to call the function when it is like a, it will be inside it will be called as methods you need to access the functionality so very simple and very easy where you have to try to practice more and more examples too and uh, resolve this such type of uh, information in uh, object oriented programming so this keyword refers to the current object only
this keyword refers to the current object and it's only available inside the method only not outside okay i'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn class constructor so the class constructor is a default method for any of the class it's not mandatory but if it is there by default when you are instantiating the class from the class declaration place you need to pass the arguments to the class which is called default method okay let's see how we can uh, build a class constructor over here instead of setting name i am modifying the class constructor over here see class constructor is having two underscore and name of the constructor itself s t r u c t o r class constructor construct yes construct and name so the same rest of the things are same whereas earlier we are passing using the parameter set name now this apple is going to be inside of class only now it is not required so the default class itself which is a having in a method we can place the pass the data arguments all right now now we will uh, have a like a access very simply by using the get name let's see we'll get an apple wow we are getting an apple so if i'm changing uh, orange over here in my class instantiating object constructor is nothing but default function starts with the two underscores and the name it is a construct default one then when once we initiated default constructor function php will automatically call the function when the object is created so when the object is created means this is the object creations so these are default parameters if you are having any like uh, parameters we need to pass the arguments it will be called as parameter and this is called as an uh, argument if we are constructing and uh, preparing functions inside the method like uh, inside the class we are going to calling these are the methods so this construct method is having a name is itself construct so this is a default constructor and default method for a class not only the php any programming language will follow the same principles object oriented programming concepts are common so the class uh, when when it is uh, instantiating the class like uh, this thing this is the default method we need to pass this parameter also the argument so when instantiating i am passing the argument so i i need not any set name set method here and uh, this data is going to be loading inside the object so when i am calling get name without parameters we will get the like refresh orange if i am changing the data what the data it is there it will be called here with the like a class and it will be assigned here automatically and we'll get an information what inside the construct so easy so the method reduces the amount of the code by writing of more methods if you are having if you want any constructors allows you can initializing objects properties upon creation on a object while creating an object the constructor defaultly will create in a some functionality if it is essential and need you just try it out it's not mandatory i'll see you in the next lecture with the destructor thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn about destructor php destructor like a function see simply when the constructor is there d e s destructor d e s t r u c t destructor that's it double underscore it will follows how the construct method is initiated so this is also an optional one for class objects when the construct is default and initiating while object is creating similar way destruct is also initiate by default when the object is initiated so when like uh, if you if you want to create a destruct method using double underscore and you need to write in php 
the example below i am explaining now the function is automatically calling when like a construct is called so let's see let's see how we are going to destruct method is is a set name like a get name i am changing to destruct now i am removing this one and uh, here directly i can call it as like uh, echo i will i will write here and uh, the fruit is fruit is the fruit is and uh, putting like uh, uh, inside something like uh, this parenthesis this name is sufficient not return is required this uh, parenthesis and close it now let's see save it and reload this fruit is orange automatically we are getting how simply we are getting here so when the construct is by default object is instant instantiating and automatically called destruct also so when the destruct is initiated like orange if i am passing to the construct automatically destruct is calling the fruit is orange we are getting output successfully how beauty it is let's see we'll see more lectures in our upcoming thank you this is also destruct is an option hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn access modifiers so what are the access modifiers and uh, how important these access modifiers in object oriented programming so properties of uh, class properties and class methods are having access modifiers which control they can be accessed or restricted and uh, permissions to be defined so the three categories of uh, access modifiers are defined those are i'm explaining you here is one is public and uh, another one is protected and the next one is private so these three keywords are very very important to know understand about the access modifiers so public by default we have a used like a properties here it is a public keyword we have used if we are not given anything here it will be also treated as public okay so the public property or method may be property or we are preparing a method which is a using of a keyword of public can be accessed from everywhere in the class or everywhere in the project also whichever the accessibility of this class objects can be possible to access so that is public and the protected the property or a method can be accessed within the class or within the class or and by class derived from the base class means parent child class relation the protected property or the protected method can be accessible these are very very important and comes to the part of private it is a only the property or a method which is a created using this particular access modifier can only be accessible within a class not derived not other places within a class only this property or method will be accessible so very clear these three things so now let's see i'm going to creating public and another one is private and the next one protected sorry second one is we can create like uh, order wise we'll go p r o t e c t e d protected sorry t e c t e d protected and private so this one is uh, price or anything you may put okay price amount anything of a fruit for an example so method we need to create three methods i am going to creating see this when accessible anywhere this one inside the class and derived class and this is for only restricted for accessing of uh, inside the class only so let's see so let's see how we are going to be defining one by one these things all right now i am creating like a 
three methods to setting of uh, this information three things okay like a set name first function yeah set underscore name something like a name variable I have defined here and here this keyword using this keyword same functionality what we have written earlier this keyword using name that equal to dollar name yes by calling this method it works perfectly so let's test it for instantiating object like uh, there is a no constructor is there so it's not required for a new fruit class name is fruit I am instantiated object new fruit now like uh, dollar obj implies dollar obj implies set name method and uh, name is orange and if I am making like uh, orange we will get an, uh, something like a set the result save it test it yeah, nothing we are getting so we need to what we need to do if I present like a echo or uh, something if I have written uh, we will get an output we will get an output there is a no error over here we absolutely working without uh, error means we are getting an error like uh, let me check echo may works here save it run it save it run it so obj set name for echo for echo function this return let's check oh save it yes when i am returning something then we are getting output directly for this object so returning so this keyword is a setting means this is a public name parameter so it's a happily accepting the objects and all so perfectly it is working now if i am donating something if i am donating something like a protected method so protected method uh, for this i'll write for method also protected pro tect protected so uh, what i need to write here let's check if i am not donating anything means it will be called as public also we can add the keyword of public also no problem so protected strictly follow so the color set underscore c o l o r with one parameter of uh, color and open and end parenthesis we'll write the same thing to setting of color we can call it as color and the name is c o l o r okay write on this so the, this is a for product protected so echo and uh, from here set name of the method is color and uh, orange is uh, orange color is orange only let make a b l u e blue let's check it first reload the page save it reload see syntax error it is showing first like unexpected variable so echo something it is a set color why we are getting this error the same we have written whereas uh, this is not accessible okay protected so here we need to write function name also function save it just check it reload okay fatal error uncaught error call to protected method fruits set color from context so you are getting an error why these protected method we can't call outside if you want to access this method inside the class means here only you can able to class inside the class strongly remember this is a very very important similarly similarly if i prepared one more method to um, private private yeah function okay uh, set price set underscore price set underscore price and uh, p r i c e price open and end parenthesis we we can get in a return value okay so the price this keyword and price so set price if i called just check with the this is a calling an objects this is a calling an objects here it may be in the same file or somewhere else by using include this class file there also you can use the same object instantiation and you can work from there itself okay price like a 20 rupees only i'm passing 
it may be data string or number anything and the method name is set price yes now save it and again you will get an error again you will get an error this is the protected and private will not be called by outside the function strongly remember if i am donating this keyword for a protected or private to this method even it won't come outside so access modifiers in this way either method or objects like a class properties will restrict the access from unauthorized access we can restrict the users to access these protected like it is also called like encapsulation methods data we are hiding inside itself by uh, by like uh, restricting the user to access these methods so using a public protected and private keywords are very essential to use in your class object oriented programs so as as we seen while uh, protected and private we are getting an great errors okay so if you are calling the same method inside the class you will be works perfectly yes inside the class you can put uh, common functions and you may call inside the class itself more accurate functions you need to prepare in that way i hope it's very clear and easy lecture for you for access modifiers public protected private so restricting the access to unauthorized of class properties and class methods and class objects to uh, access from outside the world i hope it's very simple and easy lecture for you we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn inheritance concept so inheritance is a now very important pillar in object oriented programming a class is derived from another class is called inheritance parent class and child class relation would be there and these parent class properties are going to be inheriting to child class and child class may extending the program from there itself its own functionality how we can extend this program to avoid repeating of the code and uh, making security and uh, these aspects will be there in inheritance concept so here let's see how we can define like a parent and child class relation using the fruit class so class keyword we have seen to defining fruit capital letter class name yeah open and end parenthesis so inside the class i'm creating a class properties yeah class properties of public and name of the fruit so the same way we can create like a uh, uh, one more property of color yes the both are two things and a default constructor i'm creating like a function space underscore underscore construct of two parameters it's going to be accepting that is a one is a name and color two things are accepting so open and end parenthesis here yeah in this way we need to understood the code otherwise uh, we'll get some confusion okay so the echo like uh, the fruit is the same thing we have already uh, uh, seen these all the examples you need not to worry this is not new this inside we have to write yeah this keyword and uh, implies name and uh, see the uh, color is again we need to open in end parenthesis this implies c o l o r color and terminating the line yeah this is a uh, accurately the code and default constructor by default it is in a public so awesome one thing is over and here one more like a uh, function i am creating which is a public function so donating public function 
and it is a name it is called intro either intro or greet anything you can write okay so here uh, sample information I am putting here for uh, this fruit uh, like uh, what we can write uh, what we can write over here yeah we'll do one thing this will shift into make it cut and we'll paste in intro and here we'll write something like a construct like a setting of the names okay so this implies name oh sorry name that equal to dollar name default constructor will do this activity okay and uh, this is for color and here it is C O L O R. till now we have learned so far we have learned the same thing only by creating of uh, inside the class I am only writing here okay uh, till now I have written inside the class yes this is the one class we have prepared like a class properties and a default constructor and class methods we have written we can call it as me default method and this is a only for method public method so public method means anywhere it can be accessible that's true now I am creating one more class which is uh, child class okay so the class name is like uh, st r a stra b e r r y strawberry and uh, creating using keyword of extending e x t e n d s extends e x t e n d s extends f r u i t fruit class name of the class name which is a parent class see this is a parent class i am treating any class you may create like parent or child relation but i am here i am uh, simply written class name no so i am treating it as a parent class and this strawberry class is child class i am using extend keyword to writing name of the fruit class means it is a child class which i am getting all the class functionality of the parent to utilizing by instantiating of child class clear strawberry is inherited from uh, s t r a b e r r y is inherited from fruit class okay so the fruit class inside what i am writing here uh, simple one function i need to create here so i am taking yes function name is uh, m e s s a g e message I am strawberry the fruit uh, any information we can write here I am removing this thing the child class message called or accessed so parent class having his own properties and functionality child class is having his own properties and functionality awesome now yeah, as you seen like uh, calling of an uh, instantiating of obj equal to new keyword fruit if you are like a calling in this way if you are calling in this way means you are going to instantiating this class this class is having default constructors of two parameters so two things you have to pass with the as an arguments so one is apple and another one is color so the color it would be like a red so two things you have to pass now what i am trying to doing i am calling instantiating child class by calling child class i am availing this class functionality the parent class functionality how let's see let's see by dollar obj implies c m e s message turn it so if i am putting something like uh, save it and reload the page the child class is uh, the child class is message called the child class uh, message called means this information I am able to accessing how I am calling the child class and I am going to accessing child functionality instantiating of a child class uh, instantiating child class to object okay so the local object you may write these objects at anywhere not only the same place anywhere same lines you need to write 
so here obj i'm able to calling child class in the similar way i can calling the obj and implies and implies uh, intr wo intro method of parent class let's see save it and reload wow we need a, like a something like a echo some break line is required here otherwise uh, there is no space it's showing reload yeah the fruit is uh, the fruit is apple color is red the fruit is apple and color is red is a uh, intro method is from here which is from parent class we are like instantiating child class we are able to calling the parent class method with the passing of this default constructor methods in this way inheritance is going to be it's a extending more and more it's extending more and more so how if we changed a parent class it is in a protected will it be accessible p r o t e c t e d protected method let's see just save it and run it fatal error is occurring fatal error is occurring why why it is occurring uh, like a uh, fatal error uncaught call protected method in extend like a uh, throwing an error why it is protected it's not going to be accessible over there at a derived class so for these class like uh, from outside directly we are accessing it won't come outside intro when it is protected it will be derived and called here so how i can call it is here let's see very simply we can resolve this in the child class if i am calling intro method and terminate save it now let's check it uh, something this keyword is uh, called here and i n t r o uh, let me write this line of code inside the method yes save it reload yeah call to protected method for with the message mm, it should works actually it should works so when we call the message is enough we shouldn't call this to yeah remove it so when i am calling message method only let's save it and run wow so the child class is a this statement is coming as well as intro method see the fruit is color apple like a color red fruit is apple color is red the two statements by calling this method we are able to calling this protected method inside the child class itself directly from outside if it is a, this is the last of the class declarations so outside object instantiating and calling the objects it cannot be possible while it is under private or protected if it is private within the same class only it will be able to called it is protected parent and child then only it will be acceptable if it is public anywhere maybe inside the class outside the class in the outside from the object instantiation instantiation it can be possible to call the particular inheritance concept strongly remember to write the programs very quickly to know more about inheritance object oriented main pillar of object oriented programming I hope it's very simple and easy lecture for you. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn overriding inherited methods. So, what is overriding? A method name is following same name and calling with the different arguments and different parameters will be called as overriding see looking like a by construct method is having two parameters over here in this example and uh, here it is a uh, like uh, in the child class also the same thing we are going to be following with the same construct and uh, in like these methods i am going to be implementing inside the child class see i am not doing anything much more same same method construct and uh, same intro with the public only not protected also we can put no problem let's check an uh, example to understand yeah public function intro both are same the differences of uh, to understanding overriding 
construct is uh, having here two parameters like a uh, properties and here it's uh, it's uh, having in the child one more like uh, one more like uh, puv lic one more property i'm adding here which is a uh, price okay so here it can be acceptable dollar price also so here we need to write uh, this is also one more uh, uh, parameter we need to add over here which is price all you need to observe very simple price yes all you need to observe very simple here the same construct for child class here it is a construct for default construct for parent class so here it is in a two parameters and here it is three parameters so the construct is same even the same methods also in, in like intro and uh, these are the same thing no so now let's see what happening here so very simply you may observe here when I am calling the strawberry and uh, printing for intro when I am calling it's a intro method only no so when I am calling intro yes which one I will get in output reload the page first I am getting fatal error so let me check it what happening here Mm, uh, strawberry apple red color is red two things are here so let me check first so the class name color and the fun public function construct name with the color two things over and the name color it is called and public function intro these are done so here strawberry is extending fruit class so the construct here it is doing like one two three things price price so this name color and price three things are done here it's really great so here public function intro echo fruit is the name and the color no problem i'll adjust here for our weight also i'll adjust here um, yes so we are calling with the strawberry we are calling with the strawberry where we need to pass uh, let me check few arguments it's asking no so the price i will send it 30 uh, save it and reload so the fruit is color and it is red it is showing and uh, here i need to add take a copy of this and paste prices yeah price is save it and reload so the fruit color is red apple color is red and um, price is uh, what is this price is also it is showing something not red it's a price save it reload it so the 30 so apple red 33 variables i am passing to the particular strawberry like uh, as a class child class instantiation i am passing this one so if I am instantiating parent class and passing the same like uh, default method, I can able to get this method. So instead of strawberry, if I am placing fruit, I need to change like a F R U I T fruit. Yeah, fruit and I need to pass two parameters only. Yeah, save it and reload. So this is apple is the uh, color is red and uh, this information is coming from here. So automatically what you need to understand here like a overriding will automatically will done in programming which is a inherited classes also. If you are having like a writing a same methods with the parameters these parameters based on the data type and the number of the parameters it will be automatically understand and it will works with your convenient program which you want to call and make the functionality. So whenever you are dealing with the function with the name and parameters automatically this uh, overriding option will be taken care inside the code and it will works perfectly so number of the parameters how many you are passing and number of the arguments you are passing according to the function or method it will be called all right and see you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are know about abstract class declarations.
object oriented programming abstraction is one of the certain principle in object oriented programming so through the process abstraction of a program is hiding a data relevant to data to unauthorized access from others so the complexity of increasing efficiency of the program will be there in abstract methods so declaration of abstraction class is a keyword which is called a b s t r a c t abstract class and name of the class a b s t r a c t c l a s s abstract class open and end parenthesis like uh, this curly braces inside you need to write the information what you want to write an abstract class is having a default method which is not called by outside it won't be instantiated so here extending the class definition with the method of ab str abstract method we can call it as this one is ab str ct abstract like um, protected yeah abstract protected function uh, something we can write like a get value or get value set value any name you can write this method will not be instantiated how we are instantiating the classes so strongly remember so abstract class is not going to be instantiated and abstract method is also is not going to be instantiated outside if you want to call the get value method of abstracted like a method how you can do see you need to prepare public function and uh, like um, what is the name great a common method i am preparing here you need to write like uh, something like uh, echo uh, dollar this implies like uh, abstract method get value here you can call the abstract method and uh, get have an uh, information which you have written inside the abstraction method so this abstraction method will not be called from outside and it won't be having in a body these are very very important questions abstraction method is not having any body data like open and end parenthesis like this curly braces and having this data this is the abstraction method this is abstraction class so it's not having this information and it won't be called instantiated outside it will be called and instantiated inside the methods only so many situations we have seen like inheritance and calling the methods and all so abstraction to be putting and hiding the data from unauthorized and outside so strongly remember it's very simple and easy lecture for you thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn about interfaces why we require interfaces in programming yes so many classes we may create so many methods we may create so making a common interface for all these using interfaces is possible so let's see I quickly i'll write a simple program using interface logger so interface logger is having a simple method i am implementing here to understand how we can uh, create an interfaces okay so the different classes we can call the common interface how we are going to setting here so public function execute name of the function it is gonna execute with the message yeah message okay terminate over here so now i'm going to creating some classes class log name of the class name is log to data base log to data base implements i am p l i m e n s this keyword you need to use i am p l e m e n t s implements i am p l e m e n t s implements l o g g e r logger the name of the interface okay this class implements logger keyword to use to like uh, uh, extending this class to 
by you accessing of uh, interfaces okay now public function and ex ex e q t execute message execute message for this we need to implement like uh, var dump or uh, echo we need to write something oh yeah uh, log to message to database log to message to database and dollar in the ssh -E okay log to message to database and message if any corrections we may require we'll try to add here no problem so the one class is prepared here very successfully and another one class i'm going to creating two classes we'll see in examples okay yes log to database is one class log to file is another uh, like message like uh, another class so log to file and log to message to file what the information we have added we will see in the outputs when we are accessing so these two classes i am going to instantiating at a single place and making common interface for this and uh, see class user controller another class what is this class user user controller class user controller uh, this class is having um, protected l o g g e r logger okay now public function constructor i am creating public function underscore underscore constructor so construct with construct with having l o logger and uh, local variable of this protected variable so this function what i am trying to doing here this construct method when i am calling this method what happens i am creating it's a common so using this keyword yeah using this keyword logger which can be set by uh, l o g g e r logger terminate okay save it and one more method to show like uh, public function c t i o n function show a common function for here uh, what happening we need to see the output for the purpose we are writing like uh, user implies shaker something some variable information we are going to pushing out this implies logger uh, ex execute the um, user us er user yes two methods are created for common controller that really great so this is the common controller for common making an interface commonly to this but these two classes i am giving you an example here many classes you may create many classes so this common interface to instantiating this class uh, how i am handling by using interface you see c o n t r o l l e r controller that equal to new user controller of new um, log to database log to database so this uh, controller implies show any method you may create let's save it and run it log to message to database shaker it is a log is created for database and here if i am changing the class name for only the class name log name to log to file instead log to file that's it save it and reload see log to message to file shaker file it is changed keenly observe the program very clearly we have written and uh, we are getting a uh, great output also so using an interface method the interface class is making 
so many classes you may create n number of classes which is a keyword using implements of logger any name you can create not only the logger any name if it is a logger means it is a uh, logging of database purpose only we have created interface name so this message it is passing for all with the argument i am sending here over here so the user common controller and uh, these things are very common for interfaces these things and this one if you are making very easily all the common interface you can make it for n number of classes using the same keyword you are changing here the class name that's it you are changing the class name here which class you want to go commonly you can create this common interface so thus that is a very advantageous you and when you are using these interfaces without changing any class name or any other things just adding interface class handling swapping the requirements that's it all right this is very very important to when you are writing like uh, extending your program in enterprise applications i hope it's very simple and easy lecture we'll catch you in the next one thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how to start mysql and how to access in your exam environment so it's very important to know everyone so let's see by starting up for exam controller you need to be like a uh, modules of apache and mysql to be in start position if not initiating and uh, running in a success way you need to check with your installation environment and the setting up of our installation procedures and step by step options which are the videos are available please go through the previous section and check it once these are two are showing like a green icons you need to go to back to browser and hit local host and hit enter by default it will take you in dashboard itself so here you may see that example once you are like a local environment example is installed successfully you will see this window i have already explained earlier so here apache mariadb and mysql both are same and php and perl now you see an option in right side it is in a php my admin so click on php my admin so here you will be known how we are going to accessing database environment this is the window for especially a ui which is called user interface for mysql database it may be mysql or mariadb both are same okay so now let's see see here it is a by default it is showing like left side some objects database objects like databases are by defaultly when it is installed mysql database it will be here okay so here it is about to showing like a local host server and ip address it is showing that local host ip by default is 127.0.0.1 so this is the local address server like see database server details here server it is a 127.0.0.1 via tcp ip it is connecting server type is mariadb and uh, server version and protocol user root at local host this is the local host only no we are uh, setting up our local environment so it is calling it is a local host otherwise if it is there any server it may you may be get that host name of the server or ip address okay these are very important while uh, connecting of the database server you will be known like upcoming lecture which is database connection lecture okay so i'll explain there itself one more time so see this is the window you need to concentrate see first tab is databases when you click you will get the accessing of the databases creating on all you will see here in the next lecture we'll see to create a new database there okay and sql here it is uh, you can write the queries sql queries by creating of a select query read query update query all you will be right here and uh, when you press go query will execute okay and uh, status and user accounts export and import if any data backups you need to take like export and you want to import the database you need to use to import keyword like uh, this tab to get import to the database directly you can get the database from outside that sql file and uh, you can set your local database successfully very easily okay these all are the settings you will be seen on our mysql lecture if you need very much interested go to enroll that mysql course that you will be learn everything from scratch to advanced level of mysql database okay so these are the 
things are essential to start with the php i'll tell you here very clearly okay in the next lecture we'll see about to creating database and tables thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how to create database and table so for our lectures we need to create a new database and a new table which we are going to discussing more and more for the purpose i am creating here let's see click on database and here database name we need to give all the small letters i am specifying here for my database which is app db a p p d b small letters i am giving I am not doing anything, just uh, a character set is utf8 mb4 underscore general underscore ci which is a common for many of the languages which are going to be creating databases. So let it be the same, appdb is my db name and just create on create, click on create button. So it is created. So how suddenly it is created, the database is created and it will be shown on the left side. Once it is created, no tables found in the database, so there is a no tables. So Create a table, see name and a number of columns, how many it is required for the table. So very simply what you need to do is like a table name I am giving is a registration. Table name is registration, number of columns, how many I require, four columns I am taking. Four columns I am taking. So go, click on go. What happening, see four columns, what are the names we require? pick from name and a type of data type which is very very important to know what, what type of data you are going to be adding inside the particular column okay so first I am taking as an ID which is an integer length may take 10 and uh, uh, null it is a acceptable null yes let it be not null and AI it is a auto increment very important to make it tick ID I am not inserting the data by default when the record is going to be adding auto increment id by default database it will create a number and it will add inside the column okay and uh, the next column is put it as a name small letters only without space you need to create and where care and at least a name i am giving like a hundred and a null i am accepting here yes if it is empty it should accept as a beginner you need to start accepting the null characters otherwise you will confuse it okay and email this is also i am taking as an aware cat and 100 and uh, what is the next one password password okay password this is also i am taking aware cat and it should be on 100 characters of length so four columns i am taking and uh, when i am going to save this uh, table rest of you are not required yeah if you want to make it null accepting if we are not inserting the data it should be record should be add okay there is a no problem if the new data is there for this column it will be created as a null okay save it click on save wow table is created now let's see when i click the app db database see this is the table table is nothing but rows and columns the combination how we will see the excel table ms excel microsoft excel spreadsheet the same way table will be there see the structure when you go to the click on registration table going to the structure you will see the structure here id when something key is showing here means it is a primary key by default mysql database is taken care php my admin will help you in all these aspects okay and extra auto increment means if i am inserting any record automatically the data number is taken care we shouldn't pass the data to this particular id so the next column is name where care and email where care data type which data is going to be inserting if it is a number we need to choose the data type as a number if it is image we need to take blob or image or binary data type and if it is a price we need to take decimal data type so strongly remember these are very very important while creating of a database structure this called data structures which we have learned and uh, we are uh, explained everything in mysql session of uh, uh, our courses complete mysql okay and uh, here this is uh, enough to create a basic table with the uh, id name email password which are very relevant to we are seeing in our 
upcoming lectures okay now we have a created very successfully database and very successfully we have created like a table with empty data so the next lecture onwards we'll see how to create database connection this database connection to our front end php application and uh, from there we need to inserting the record from there itself using php form okay if you want to create and insert the record here itself what you need to do go to sql here it is c select star from registration the name of the table it is came so when you are running this is the query select star from table name so when you run this what it will return see empty it is coming why because like a empty result set why it is empty result set there is a no data if you want to insert here it is a simple methods are also will generate if you press insert see insert query would be this way id name email password so id we we shouldn't insert here automatically database will take in so rest of the parameters will write one is like a name is myself i am taking name and email id at uh, gmail.com data this is the data value for password is test okay so now go and see one row inserted one row is inserted when you come to the browse when you come to the browse see the database record is inserted id is taken care to added by number 1 first record id automatically database will taken care why we have a given in a while creation of the database structure we have a given ai auto increment option is enabled so whenever you are going to be making integer and uh, ai will be applicable if other than integer it won't applicable okay strongly remember to create a basic database structure why we created id auto increment id and automatically it is coming these are all the things how helpful when you created auto incremented id for an a table you will known very much more details in front and when you are creating an id and with the primary key like at least one key for a table will give you more and more performance from the table when you are inserting lakhs of records even you will get accurate output very short time all right these are very very important interview questions you need to answer while you are facing it so the next lecture we'll see database connection thank you hello everyone welcome here now we are going to creating a database connection to front end php2 back end database so let's see for this what i am trying to doing in my project i am creating a folder why because these are the secure forms we need to make it in separate app so i am making a folder name which is called crud c r u d crud so inside the crud i am going to creating now let's see create a new file which is a name is con.php so save it inside the crud i am saving okay c o n n dot php c o n n dot php which is the file name i am going to creating for database connection this is the database connection i am creating for common connection for all the entire application okay so the database connection database connection is require is require four parameters one is server the like i have told you like a server name is local host local host and second one is user name user name what is the user name for the particular uh, database default user name for the application which you have inserted and installed example it would be root is the user name if you are having any custom username you can check it and password is for default password is empty there is a no password pass this is the variable only just i am writing for the variables password for empty there is a no password for the default in production server you need to set this password and uh, root uh, like username of the database and password and this is also local host means where the ip address or host name where the server host name you need to present over there and db database name of the database what is the name of the database which we have created see our database name is appdb so 
output app db is our database name these four parameters are very very important to connect the database okay now there is an option a local variable i am taking equal to my sql i which is a uh, my sql i underscore connect yes this is a built in method driver which is already available inside the php so accessing this method we need to pass these four parameters server username password db that's it now how i can pass it dollar server comma order is very important user sorry dollar user name comma dollar passw password comma dollar db so once you prepared in this way yes in this way once you prepared in this way this is very important for the order uh, we let's check this if the database connection is working or not we need to check it dollar c o n open and end parenthesis and uh, else statement open and end parenthesis uh, a simple statement i'll write here for echo connected if not connected we'll throw here um, not connected save it and con.php just run that con.php in localhost uh, my project my project c r u d cred c o n n dot php hit enter wow see the path i have created a folder under the my project cred the the path of the file where i have created so here let's see this is the path my project crud folder i have created database common connection so here if i am accessing the file it is showing, showing that connected means see this message i am getting so if the connection is successfully established okay now this code is not required to run so make sure to comment it save it so my database common connection is readily available using like uh, with this connection how i will access in the next lectures we'll see to accessing of the database connection commonly i am not repeatedly write all these things why we require to use the common connection i am not going to repeatedly write all these things and uh, next lectures like uh, this file i'll include there whenever i require the database i'll include this cnn file like a cnn.php file to where the database connection is required that file and i'll access this parameter all right how these things you will see one by one we'll see i'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how to insert code inside the database table which we have created database table as you seen here we are able to seeing so this table how we are going to inserting the records using php form let's see by creating a new file which is a file name i am creating inside the crud folder so segregating a dynamic forms which are connected to the database and which are not connected that way we need to maintain the separations so here and uh, like i'll create a basic forms to focusing on code how we are going to writing so let's see reg.php registration form i am creating with the name of reg.php so this reg.php i have to create like um, uh, yes so reg.php form so this form like uh, reg.php form may require like a basic html also yes html yes registration yes in a uh, here like uh, what is this our uh, sublime text editor will help you when you press ht and tab you will get all these things so within a body i am creating a quick form open and end tag of the form and here i am writing something like uh, uh, input type it is uh, like a uh, first one it is the type text t e x t and the name is name according to our parameters place holder enter your name 
okay so in this html if you are good at html this all will uh, will help you very greatly so reg.php i need to check so reg.php see the form is enter your name placeholder it is coming and the name is coming everything is coming so according to this what i am trying to doing now i am adding uh, like uh, how many parameters are there in my table uh, one is uh, uh, see here if I am expanding this table with the columns, you will see email, name, password. So, two more parameters I am going to add him over here. One, two. Yeah, hit enter. So, by space is required now. So, br I will take for space for yes, brs and uh, two brs here also. So, the first one is name, email, and PA password. So here we can text it as a type it is email and the name is also email and enter your placeholder email. And the type is um, password and the name is password and enter your password. So awesomely we have created a great form so let's come here reload so enter your name enter your email enter your password three things are completed now we need like a input type uh, submit we require so for a button to get an uh, action so type is submit name is also um, submit and uh, value if we want we can put like a registration save it reload the form so registration button is here uh, we'll try to split into breaking a lines if you are good at uh, form design you just try to apply your own things okay now three things html forms i have created with a very clear name there is no spaces between the names strongly remember so email type enter your email and name is password like a name email password three things are here so form tag what i'm writing uh, action for action i'll create a form new form i'll create i'll transmit there mm. or else here also we can write the code no problem okay here also we can write the code uh, for a basic i'm going to create a new form to communicate with the post method okay so the method we need to use post and uh, this action form I'm creating a new form which is called insert so insert dot php insert dot php I'm created a new form so the php yes here what I need to write here insert dot php let's see first I'm going to accepting include uh, what is that name my form name is conn.php why i am including this form to get database connection see this conn.php this form i am going to including insert.php all right now if eset method is there eset method is built in method and uh, dollar star post post uh, variable is submit variable is submit is post submit if it is happened then only the code will be entered inside the block if this button is not clicking it won't run this code won't run okay so once uh, what happened when the pressing the button at reg.php uh, like uh, local variable I created and post method we have seen like how to access the using the post method the variable name is first one is name this is the name I am taking from uh, like uh, this name three input text boxes are given no one is name another one is email another one is password so the three things we are going to be receiving here as a local parameters one is name one is email another one is password so here also variable names you can change it password and email three things so when the 
button is submitted while filling the data when the button is submitted it will be comes here it will verifies submit button is happened action is set means it is null or action is something is happened it will be identified there so once it is done it will comes what the name is uh, inserted added in this particular text box it will be assigned to this variable similarly email password also so the three things are reaching here now what we need to do very simple most of our uh, things are completed let me check with that a uh, name is coming or not yeah dollar name terminate just check it reload uh, test registration um, okay on action we have to write insert.php yes here an action insert dot php that insert like when i am pressing submit button the action insert dot php the code is going to be rendering to the insert page pushing to the okay so this insert page is receiving on submit and it will be prints the information let's check reload yes bhuvan registration bhuvan is coming and here you may check it insert dot php so how awesome so the post method is working perfectly and the name is coming to assigning here and we are getting output echo is a greatly you can use wherever you require to check with your code so echo is nothing but it's debugging tool also okay so three things are we have received great now insert insert equal to i'm preparing insert query what we have seen here insert query like uh, we have seen here like uh, where it is a query i have to check it on the registration table on the registration table yeah sql insert see insert into registration table name column names and values same way we need to write here like uh, insert into take double quotes uh, either capital or small letters you can write no problem insert into is in a common keyword table name is registration r e g i s t r a t i o n insert into registration table name and uh, followed by the columns and uh, once the columns are uh, written we like uh, values and open and end parenthesis here we need to write values so name of the columns and the name of the values order are very important so id is not required so name email password three columns so comma based yes comma based and values also using single quotes the name like a value how it will comes this name will come here so here this name and a comma put a single quotes or double quotes any quotes you may use it um, uh, email dollar email and make a comma and putting single quotes dollar p a s s w o r d so three columns we have given there and uh, three things we have given here also put terminate I'll make it big for you to easily read. You will understand. Making a small code. Yes. See, insert into registration table columns name, email, password. Three things we are inserting. ID is not required. Values for these name is dynamic parameter, and email dynamic parameter, and password dynamic parameter. We are mapping three things to three values, which the form is making completely dynamic. and what the data is inserted into the form that will be assigned to here and these are assigning to here and once the query is executed it will be inserted into the database how the query will execute let's check ins simple any variable you may take no problem so n is equal to uh, my sql uh, my sql query yes my sql i my sql li underscore query my s q u e r y my s q l i query this will accept two parameters one is dollar c o n where it is coming from c o n and i n s e r t insert this statement this connection is coming this variable is coming from here this one how this con dot php we are already added here so we can able to accept that parameter 
and insert is in a statement we have prepared and it may be query or insert anything which variable you have written that query we are adding into the mysql like query so save this and now where it is inserted or not if we want to check if condition we need to write for ins it may be res also you can write no problem same how we tested uh, with the database the same way we need to write so echo insert like uh, I call like uh, insert it and the same information if it is not done else part we can check with not not insert save it and go back to the registration form save it and uh, make it small code uh, just a second make it small code now let's check with the registration form so here um, test REC test record test at gmail.com and password is test so when I press registration wow you may observe here the output we have seen like inserted inserted means we have uh, this information we are getting so let's check in the database let's check in the database click on registration table name so this one automatically 2 is coming here the record is inserted successfully so let's check the next one I'll try to insert go to the reg.php and here I'll may write like a John John at uh, gmail.com John at a password something okay when I press registration record is inserted dynamic form we have created check with the browse Wow database here in the John record how simply and beautifully we are inserting the records as many records you want to wish to insert in your database yes you can insert by using the registration form by using the same registration form and uh, uh, my sincere request to you to maintain to add many parameters to add many parameters what you need to do in the here you need to add one more parameter similarly you need to accept the parameter and write the registration table the column order of the column and which which order you are going to be uh, mapping the parameter that parameter also you need to place at the value and that's it these are not uh, required to write anything more these are very common so done our insert form is successfully completed and we are seeing the data here so I hope it's very simple and easy lecture uh, you to uh, like writing of uh, insert with the database much details you have learned here so clearly take a note of this code for inserting of the records into the database I hope you just learn with the simple and basic steps basic steps you learn first interact with the database life cycle you see how it is going to be inserting into the database then you need to try apply your own thoughts to validating and more things all right I hope it's very simple and easy for uh, this is the design form and uh, this is for insert code also you can make it like uh, removing this and making self to putting this method above to the this place this area you can uh, define the PHP code and uh, you can write the same code and write the same functionality yes with a single page also it will be done try yourself it, uh, it's not a uh, typical very easy try yourself and uh, We'll see you at next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to read database records. So till now we have seen how to insert database records and we are opening the database and inside the database only we are seeing. But a user will not come to the database and he won't check with these records which are inserted inside the data. So how we are going to providing a user interface for seeing the records. Let's see here. It's a very simple and easy lecture we are going to learning now. So here once you identify yeah, the local host database. Yes, this is a app db is our database. Registration is our table. Right. So it's a 
coolly it is there yeah which is already here again it's unopened okay done now just simply for new file i'm creating new file i'm creating for reading of the records from the database so for that i'm saving a file name as read read.php that's it any name you may create it like a read.php i'm created so let's see very simple lecture simplification is done with the lectures so php tag is initiated here so here for insert form to interacting with the database we used include connection so reading of the records means we need a database connection yes perfectly we require so once we get the connection we need to write a query to establish a database connection query it is equal to a simple query select star from r e g i s t r a t i o n registration select star from registration and now r is for result set you may think it my sql i underscore um, query q u e r y query and uh, with the two parameters of c o n n comma c o n comma dollar q r y the query which we are passing so it's done save it uh, read dot php if you want to see the read query simply print r will help us so dollar rs why because this one the multiple records will come here so let's check with that code yeah the query we need to write copy and url this query is read read dot php yes now let's see object fields 0 4 rows 3 rows are coming current fields 4 like a field count 4 everything some result object we are getting outside with this so when we want to reading records we need to present in output in html form so how we are going to mapping this html form uh, by making comment of this it's not required now onwards so here i am creating html form so how i will create the html form in a table order any anything you may if you wish to create is yes, you can create your own way so here i am trying to creating like a uh, first uh, t head t head yes for heading of the titles inside the t head i am creating a row table row like uh, here like a uh, table header is a uh, th tag i am using yes for the title of serial number how many columns like a serial number is one another one is uh, two three four yes serial number i'm adding and uh, name mail and password yes enough this is not required so yes table heading is completed so when i refresh uh, reload the page yes serial number name email password so this table i am making border border b o r d e r equal to one save this reload so the border is created yes this is the output of the form so where the data is mapping where the data is mapping let's let's create a table body for the data t body open and end tag yes here we need to write the php code and uh, call the uh, php yes now here we need to write something like a uh, uh, first we need to mapping i'm using while loop to getting the data i'm using while loop to getting the data so here let's see uh, while while uh, what how can I, I i may define row that equal to my sql i underscore f e t c h fetch records so fetch underscore array here this is rs of this rs of this record result set okay so whenever we are getting some data from which is the query is executing which is a query with the connection executing and uh, the result set is storing into this particular variable 
that variable array objects I am reading with the mysql underscore fetch underscore array built in method readily available in PHP. So these are coming and uh, while reading these object and uh, reading coming one by one and uh, storing into the row till end of the rows while is iterating hence I have used while loop here. So now now what we will try to do here here I am stopping uh, this while loop yes let's check here yeah this I'll make it parenthesis of open only I have initiated okay now here I'm trying to creating like uh, one more PHP tag one more PHP tag PHP to making while loop end tag yes this end tag okay so in between in between don't confuse it it's very simple why because wherever the PHP code we are writing open and end the tag wherever we are writing HTML code we need to write in plain HTML in that way okay so now here we need to create like a tr tag plain HTML tr tag open and uh, end tag inside the tr tag we need to write something like a table data so the table data we need to write like a, yes TD first TD I am putting something like a serial number we have used table data for the table data first serial number we have used so how I will get the table data here it is in a PHP code uh, inside the PHP I need to write a serial number to get a common serial number let's see like a dollar SN I am taking equal to 1 and here I am incrementing serial number dollar SN plus plus dollar SN plus plus I'll get so while loop while iterating always it is incrementing by plus 1 so the dollar uh, echo echo dollar SN I'm printing here now let's see save and reload uh, something SN something SN okay sorry it's a making like a dollar save it and reload so one two three three records are there so one two three serial numbers three times the fetch like while loop is iterating so one two three it is coming if it is there more records it will come automatically okay first uh, first record we have added successfully now I need to call the like uh, name let's see name for echo the name how we will get here row of name that's it mm, for that row row of row of name of the parameter of column name yes that's it reload shaker these are the things are coming very simple from here onwards so row of what is the row of this row of what the column name is having inside the database table the table this registration table is there no what the column name that column we need to write here inside the rows when we are fetching the data while using the SQL query select statement we'll get the data with the column name wise outputs only so first we have added uh, like a name uh, second column third column we have a email mapping the columns to our report password that's it save it and reload the page that's it we seen here like a name email password how simply we are seeing with the records and uh, how many options we have seen here so beautifully you learn the code to write in a single simple to getting like a, to getting like a, a reading of the records from the database making the beautification and applying a bootstrap CSS all you can apply for these reports the combination of the reports all you make the combinations by learning the things only you will learn one by one so in this case you need to apply in a simple way to learn how to get and how to read the records from the database very easily okay i'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn 
updating these records how simply we are looking so here to update and records first we need to like uh, do one name here after this like action so this is a c t i o n action i am adding here so i'll get here it's an action so this action like a column also we need to add something one more td for something i'll write here maybe i'll write here for h reference link so we'll see save it you will get the portions correct we are getting now to edit or modify a record we need to take like a all the code into our edit mode so how we will get for that i am creating a new file and saving this file is under edit underscore user sorry it's a underscore user dot php okay this form first we need to edit in like a to working with the editing functionality what we need to do to get the records how the reading of the records is happen the same way we need to get the records let's see here i'm taking a copy of that and pasting select start from the registrations where where we will write like a filtering all these things will apply here okay rs we have written similarly to read the record rows we have a used for the row like using mysql i mysql i underscore fetch underscore array we have used same will apply uh, reading of records one by one will read and store into the row here okay so the row recording records are reading one by one and it's coming how one by one there are group of records are there yes we'll write where class to filter the records where id equal to where id equal to and filtering the records using a dynamic parameter will pass when like from where i can pass this dynamic parameter i'll show you yeah single quotes of both sides okay uh, let me make it a small one yeah now you will see this id parameter i'll get somewhere else i'll show you how i am getting okay yeah now let's create html form here okay let's create html form here remove and uh, edit user so within the body we need to add entire the form what we have created while uh, inserting the code so this form i am taking a copy and under the editing so the same parameters i am using now so the form action i have taken and uh, everything is uh, added here so instead of placeholder instead of placeholder i am removing this one and uh, i am adding value equal to value equal to uh, php tag and dynamic values i am adding php and uh, uh, here echo the row which we are reading here this row uh, where it is yes echo dollar row of name of the parameter which is a name and turn it that's it in this way we need to present the data into our uh, like uh, see the value of uh, from there to here yeah take a copy instead of placeholder i'm pasting this one yeah something is wrong yes something is wrong means here it is a require for double quote yeah similarly i need to remove the placeholder here also paste this one and here i need to make it password and here i need to make it email so what the parameters we are reading from the database on independent record id wise those will come and assign over here okay yes yes now the type is submit and the value we can make it update all right yes let me let me access this form then you will clear where everything is clear everything is clear so the form is would be like this okay so the text box email password same thing and the values which are coming from the database are presenting here okay so 
to get an id from the read i need to pass an id from the read i need to pass an id how i will pass let's take an href link so href link a hr f a href and here edit and close the a link okay sorry edit text when i save this and reload you will be shown the edit link when i press the link it's it should be go to edit underscore user dot php form with the question mark follows the id equal to uh, the id equal to php tag mm, question marks php echo uh, the dollar row of id which are coming from the database yes that's it save it's a not a dollar it's a underscore save it so this edit user form which is already available here so we need to when when the user is pressed there id local object super global of get we need to get from here get of variable it is id terminate let's see all the functionality is done so here we are reading we are when i am pressing the this link when i am pressing this link it is going to be present like uh, this id is mapping here with the id parameter url parameters it will be called and it is passing to the edit underscore user dot php with the question mark with this id based on this id it is going to be assigning over here where i am getting that id value and storing into this here and passing to my query based on that query it will be data will be filtered and unique record will get and it will be stored here with the row wise and it will be displays the record information to our php form let's save it and run it just click on test record 2 edit wow test record 2 is coming with the data so similarly you can see that here john so john record is coming uniquely pure dynamic shaker yes shaker record is coming how beauty it is then so so far we have created something it's really awesome now insert is php when i press the update button let's see when i press the update button if i am adding something correction here so when i press the update button we need to write the update code so uh, update.php form is required so i'm creating a new file i'm saving as update.php okay here i need to write the update code in this particular form let's write here the update code how simply we can write the update code yeah for writing of update code first we need uh, this connection add a connection yeah and once the adding of the connection we need to accept the parameters of tree uh, yeah name email password these three things are there no so add over here okay id email password so id is where it is id yeah id is also required so rest of the things are all are common just i'm when i'm pressing update i'm passing the parameters from there to here that's it that's it these things are came now i need to prepare a query q r y that equal to putting double quotes update statement is update table name r e g i s t r a t i o n registration set update table name registration table name is registration set column names what are the columns column names we need to change like column name uh, equal to uh, what the value if it is there any changes in the name variable it will be what columns we need to change that columns we need to write here email that equal to all the columns which are available in our uh, table i am writing here so email column uh, email column and uh, another one is password so password name of the database column name equal to which the dynamic parameter we are passing okay password and where which record we are going to uploading id where id equal to dynamic id which we are uh, already having dollar id 
So this ID also we are accepting from there. That's it. Once the query is written, we need to write like a record uh, result set. It is MySQLI query with two parameters. One is uh, dollar uh, con comma dollar q or y. What we have prepared here. So it's done. Once it is done, I'm I want to show a user message to that. It is uh, like a SSRI PT script tag open and end with the SSC RIPT script tag alert message to the user okay inside the script alert of alert of hello your record is updated successfully script will execute let's check uh, let's check it first if is there any errors at all go back john edit john one two three two three four okay all parameters will change one and one more digit update so hello your record is updated successfully just okay so it is a going to be somewhere else where it is going id in a something so the same form is loading and it's throwing like a update error so to avoid such errors we need to write once the record is completed h e a d e r header and uh, here I need to put like a location to be redirecting to uh, where I can change this for uh, registration reg.php once it is completed the task it will be redirected to the uh, where yes from here go edit shaker 1 2 update so it is going to be once the record is inserted completed updated successfully it is going to the uh, reg.php so we'll see like read.php read yes read.php we'll see go back go back reload edit shaker 1 2 update uh, never and uh, reload the page so once it is completed successfully of uh, updation of the records update registration set where the id and password uh, MySQL query yes update registration set name equal to name email and password where ID is an ID yes finished so test in this way once the record is successfully updated you will get an updated data in your computer system so if you are like a value the name email password these things only update update.php when you submit the button it is going to be redirecting here it is mapping and update uh, registration table update registration regist yes correct save it and reload something number is not taking i think so edit testing update so update query is something like a CON is coming MySQL I query and a CON QRY everything is perfect over here it seems but updating is not completed so the same way you need to implement the query same way might be sees that uh, seems that uh, something we are writing anything wrong here no name email password according to we are uh, mapping the parameters as well there is a no such uh, doubt and all email password password email email id so test yourself the same way you need to write the code to for an update all right we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn a simple lecture of deleting of the records. So, very basically, I am going to read from 
inside the action we have added edit like uh, this form so one more thing i am adding like uh, here it is in like uh, another uh, this one is delete -E, delete so delete edit user this way like delete -E, delete underscore user with the id save it and reload so we are getting delete option here so delete underscore user i need to create one more form so uh, inside the card edit user is there so copy paste it duplicating the copy and paste it so here what you need to do same form you can rename it into delete -E -E, user that's it so once you open this delete user let's check with open with uh, it will be displayed here yeah delete user yes delete user it is there so with the id uh, th this code is not required here delete user yeah delete query like uh, this all the html code is not required to write here alerts are also we have written yes this code is enough so take a copy of this code and uh, yes something a copy in paste into the inside of the delete user so here with the id is enough id is enough and a query these are also not yes maybe put or not require delete a from registration where delete from registration where id save it and reload the form click delete click delete so passing an id or not yeah id is passing delete underscore user and uh, delete underscore user we have a prepared very registration where id equal to dollar id and uh, mysql query query and uh, our result set so reload the page and delete let me check it once now let's see here so the delete code is absolutely updated uh, very accurately so here you may observe there is the read one yes so once you prepared in this code like uh, on td delete underscore user dot php question mark with the id this row of id is passing this row of id is passing when you click this button when you click here in this button it will be redirected to delete underscore user you need to get it's not post i have shown you like get you need to write and get the parameter of the id this id is going to be mapping delete star from like from uh, registration table where id is important otherwise uh, everything will be deleted so the particular id will be deleted by executing this query you will see the message and redirect into the read.php let's see save it and reload the page when you click on delete john is deleted from the database also you will the record will be deleted let's check with the records so only one record is left so in this way you can write the program with the delete for and the records this one and from read you need uh, this line uh, see, uh, showing the records and a delete user form this is the code you need to require that's it to completing this crud operations i hope it's very simple and easy lecture for you i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here this is the lecture for registration form so all you need to know about real world how the registration form would be see here when i am seeing like a, this is the form actually we have done with the design in previous lectures also so here you need to create all you need to create a html form with the form tag and action we have used for insert.php the method for post method we have used so the name label i am uh, taken here directly the name email password three parameters which are here it is displaying and the placeholders we have used like uh, to enter to user convenient to enter his name enter his email enter his password we have uh, kept here so awesome now you just see here if you want to create one more like a uh, majorly most of the websites or the registration forms like uh, will be asked you to enter like a name email and password 
taking these or these parameters are sufficient if you need to write something like a h2 tag uh, in this way like you may call it as re g i s t r a t i o n form save this h2 tag by knowing you will get registration form view and if you want to make it more beautification as just simply apply like uh, what you can apply over here the style sheets and uh, the requirements of uh, c bootstrap you may apply directly like uh, just go to the google and hit bootstrap bootstrap templates are ready madely available expanding here go to the bootstrap and uh, here it's in a docs here it is in a docs so go to the docs forms are there so the form control selection these are all the things are available so on overview on overview you may see the basic form with the parameters these are the parameters of the basic form uh, maybe you may take like form controls taking a simple form like see if you want to make it input form feels like in this way the this form of the beautification if you require you just take a copy of this div elements and uh, paste into your html form and uh, using these input tags you need to like uh, it's a id is already there if you want to make like a name you can make it your custom names and ready madely you can apply applying of a bootstrap is very easy super easy how go to the getting started from there you will get an a uh, simple starter template this you need to take a copy of this code see here is a copying of a snippet of code if you want to take a copy of this complete bootstrap to integrating in your system like uh, in your local php project from there you can apply all the bootstrap layouts and forms and comfortable designs ready made designs you will get over there okay once you complete the uh, like a registration of the details and all you just uh, we are passing action method insert.php here it is going to be inserting the data like uh, mapping the parameters and uh, insert query is going to be executing and uh, this data is going to be inserting into our database very clear so by if you need like uh, more parameters on your database table if you are having like a uh, here more table like uh, this car table is having uh, when i go to the structure id is a auto increment name email password these three things are there very importantly we are going to seeing uh, like a uh, next lecture onwards this password is by default it is showing something what the password is entered by the user but it's not good it's not good practice to know so the next lecture we'll see for the purpose only i have initiated this uh, registration form here so we'll see how we are going to be making more uh, convenient registration forms and uh, inserting into the database with the real world more options what we require in the real world we'll see in the next lecture onwards i'll catch you soon thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how to apply md5 algorithm for encryption of data most cases we are seeing like uh, in this lecture also we are observing here in our database is accepting plain data so the password what the user is entered here it is directly it is taking and inserting so here what i am trying to doing uh, when i am trying to like a uh, new form i am inserting test rec test record test at gmail.com and password test at 123 i am submitting so when i press the registration record is inserted when i go to the database and it is showing test at 123 it's like absolutely it is showing so i don't want to take password directly i don't want the encrypted data to be insert in the password only any text you want to make the encryption you can apply the same md5 algorithm so let's see the same thing is following and whereas insert form we are collecting the data of a form input text so here once i am insert like a receiving the data over here just in md like a, in php ready madely md5 algorithm is readily available see md5 method press tab that string it is accepting the string so these post data parameter control c and x paste that's over my end 
save it and go to the registration form reload just go back yeah reload and uh, test a new record of uh, uh, which one Mary record will insert Mary at uh, at gmail or google mail dot com and Mary at one two three Mary at one two three I am submitting the password in this particular record let's check yes record is inserted successfully go back to our database reload here wow Mary password is inserting like encrypted data have you seen here what a beauty when I reload the page we will get the Mary data like Mary password is also we are getting encrypted data only so applying of uh, applying of MD5 algorithm in such a easiest technique in Python I'm sorry it's a PHP so strongly remember to applying of uh, MD5 to encrypting the data which you want so once the validation and everything is completed that parameter you straight away you apply the MD5 method built-in ready-made method to taking a password which is our encrypted data is mapping here then it is going to be inserting into the database then we are seeing here it is in a record of MD5 password of Mary at 123 that's it we'll see we'll catch you in the next lecture to applying of SHA, SHA algorithm. thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how to apply SHA algorithm to encrypt the data and passwords either MD5 or SHA algorithm anyone you may apply to in your encrypting and decrypting the passwords so here how to apply SHA earlier lecture we have seen MD5 application applying so SHA is very easy SHA1 that's it SHA1 is uh, by writing SHA1 with the method inside replacing of MD5 if you are uh, good at uh, here by seeing that this one you check with the previous lecture and come back to here and applying when I am writing SHA only I have replaced see how simply I am making a simplification that's it so reload the page and uh, I am writing like a Perry record Perry at gmail.com and Perry at one two three so submit register the record yes record is reinserted let's check with the database wow it's a SHA algorithm is also applying for Perry we have used for MD5 for this record and uh, we have used for the SHA algorithm technique for this one so encryption is perfectly doing with the data which we want to apply and which we need to like uh, encrypt the data of uh, using this MD5 and SHA algorithms are very very super easy once the parameter you are reaching with the text or data just apply this SHA algorithm and uh, you will get an, a great experience to know the answers for this I hope it, these are the very super easy techniques in PHP most of the lectures any other programming language you may see uh, I, I hope this is a very very super easy for uh, PHP to applying of these algorithms that's all for this thank you hello everyone welcome here you will be known here how to create login form and its functionality so let's see in previous lectures we have seen to inserting of uh, md5 passwords of Mary let's see how we can prepare this md5 of uh, Mary where the user don't know how to add these type of passwords so even uh, he doesn't understand what it is so let me uh, prepare a new form for login form and how we are going to comparing this one to making user is logged in or not so create a form with file new file save as login.php okay so login.php we need to write something uh, php yes so here I am writing something so what I will write here first we need to whenever we are interacting with the database we need uh, 
uh, connection okay before going to the connection first we will write here uh, yeah this form is not required the connection yeah we can put the connection no problem uh, so insert form the registration table yes these things I'll take take a copy and uh, here I'll put paste so this I can replacing with the login form and uh, login form so email and password is enough for login form so I'm removing these two things email and password so registration is replaced with the login or sign in okay login.php when I open this login.php when I open this login.php will be seen like this login form okay enter your email enter your password and login the form is readily available it's done so code to be written no so that code I'll be right in the top place only take a copy of this and here I'll make it okay when each submit is happened see each set is implemented at the above to the page so this is not required it will be on self action will be on self once the action is done it will be go to the top and each submit is verified then it will be received like name name is uh, there no name is not there so this is your remove email and password okay that's really awesome let's check with that and um, you are logged in and uh, not logged some not logged something any message you may put over there okay so let's check now so once the user is filling the username and password here like email id and password he will be when he is the submitted he will come here come here in the same page and it will verify email is assigned to here password is assigned to here and we need to check with the select query now so what would be the query now not this one uh, yeah we need to write the insert now it's a query q or y i'm replace that one and here also i'm replacing the q or y query done my job is done now here remove entire the thing select star from select star from uh, registration where user like uh, what is the column name for the database for email uh, for an email we have given email only so use the where email equal to single quotes dollar email okay so the email means all the records are coming to assigning to this query which is the email matched which the user is entered the email that is matched so along with the password will also come select star okay now what we need to do uh, here it is in a result set rs will comes so the result set will comes and here uh, with the result set in a single row we need to take from uh, my mysql fetch array yes this mysql fetch array with this dollar rs what is this rs this result set row wise we are fetching using mysql fetch underscore array method and uh, assigning to this particular row all right now what we are doing now see so we can make it uh, yes if condition here it is there no yes now if dollar uh, row of dollar row of PASSWORD from database equal to equal to dollar PASSWORD password if both are equal then only it will goes to the login okay so let me check once reload the page reload the page Mary record is there Mary at 123 have given the password Mary at gmail.com Mary at 123 let's check Mary at gmail.com Mary Mary at 123 logged in not logged in not logged in why why not logged in this is the plain text is going oh sorry it's a shy is going on uh, MD5 should verify here also 
in the login page it should be comes to the md5 password and uh, this is from the database md5 password so it will be verified and then you will get logged in so save it and reload yeah reload mary mary at one two three login not logged in why maybe i didn't uh, i'm not uh, remember password correctly i think so so let me insert a new record perry at gmail.com um, smith smi smi th smith smi th smith Smith is inserted successfully. Now let me check with this record with the login form. Okay. So here Smith at gmail.com Smith. Yeah, check with the login. Wow, it's again it's coming like uh, not logged in. So something is wrong. Yeah, verifying the database. Let me check here. Come to here. Yeah, Smith is given smith at gmail.com. Login form is happening here. This password and where email and uh, row dot password is equal to equal to your not lo your logged in. So both are same then why it is not coming the both are same then why it's not coming so where would be the checking of the configuration is missing out the record is inserted same record we are uh, going to be verifying yeah smi th smith okay at gmail.com smi th smith is the password so login not logged in why if row of password okay no problem what we need to do here very simple check with the um, echo of uh, this one terminate EXIT and this one. So check the login form now. Debugging. So SMI and Smith. SMI TH Smith. Logged in. So this is the keyword uh, is coming. It's coming to be something. Right? In the database, is it the same? To be 5C. Uh, what is this? To be 5C BDA. BDA. Yeah, both are same. Okay, okay. Don't worry. The word ring. So this is the password. And what the password it is showing? Oh, uh, maybe I'm thinking. No, it is correct. No. Echo. Yeah, here you can relieve. Echo. This debugging will take much time. So you need to learn much more examples. So echo dollar yes w r d. What the password is having? We are going to comparing both. See different different things are coming. So the password is coming different and this is coming different. So just let me check that uh, here in the registration. Oh it is Shah and we are comparing with the another one so then we'll take for Shah here see how the confusion is happened now let's check with the login yeah here is the login form let's check here so smith at gmail.com smith smith so login so both are same both of the strings are matching now uh, I need to make it uh, this one I need to where it is logged in or not yeah your logged in is coming here so I need to make 
comment of these lines okay save it and go back over here hit enter just check with the smithsmith at gmail.com and smithsmith so login so you are logged in you are logged in awesome so see in this way you need to write the login form very accurately if you are saving encrypted password so when the user is entering something you need to encrypt it then with the database row encrypted row with the encrypted password you need to match it if both are matching you need to redirect the page to the user in the dashboard that we will see in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn on submit click form validation so i'll show you a few parameters so based on that you may validate very clearly your form let's begin by creating a simple html form so the form is by writing form tag and uh, input tags for name and uh, input type text name or id you may take anything f name okay so or else you may also add id also email so the input type email and the name is email just simply i'm giving two parameters over here all right along with this two i'm putting here like uh, input type it is like uh, submit yeah submit it is there and the name also i'll give you like uh, uh, submit and the value also i'll give like uh, submit value is enough name is not required so i'm removing this name yes save this let's check here okay there is an alignment is required to make like uh, some break line I need to put like uh, some br line save it wow so this way i have a uh, created a simple form and uh, here i can write uh, two break lines let's check yes perfect now this is my form when i click this form when i click this form i need to like validate these two are not empty these two are not empty so let's see how i am going to validate it for this i am going to writing like a form name parameter it is like uh, some values i have to put here like uh, my small letter my reg or my login whatever it the name you may put here okay and uh, method we need to write like a post method you need to use either post method or get method anyone you may apply in php forms or any dynamic forms okay action if it's not mentioned any action it will be treated as self if you want to redirect some other places it may you may write action and uh, path of the file where it is required so now i need to write a specific functionality for on submit functionality to validate so where i can write this validation yeah either here below to the form or we may write here in, uh, by making a uh, script tag yes this is the latest browser i'm using now so to shift tab i'm not applying here so here i'll write okay here what i'll write my function function validation my function name is validation all right so here uh, you may write validation or validate form anything any name or my registration any custom name you may write not specific to this validation only i'm doing the validation for the purpose only i'm preparing the name of validation only okay now let x equal to like a document dot uh, forms like a forms of what is the form name what is the form name like uh, i'm used here my reg my registration form of my registration form of what is the my text box name 
this text box first text box name is controller name is f name so you need to write f name here so once it is done what you need value inside the uh, like uh, this value which we are entering here some value that value you required to validate what exactly you need the value which is entered inside the box you require so let x we have taken so we have one more parameter take a copy and paste here you may take like uh, next immediate letter it is y and the controller name is email dot value that's it two things are getting from the html element to the input values to here like um, javascript code now see now the game starts now if x equal to equal to if it is empty what i what i need to write here very simply i'll write very simply sorry not here yeah here i need to write uh, immediately it should be a l e r t alert mm, name must be must be name must be filled cannot be blank whatever it, uh, statement you want to write you can write here return uh, false return false now save it and run something submit it okay we have to call the validation function at here no so let's uh, call it uh, how i can call it on submit yes on submit event i need to call and uh, here return what is the function name validation yes oh sorry validate i o n validation yes return validation yes save this yeah save this and reload yes continue submit so return validation uh, anything else to be there here it should come like uh, something function it is written validation validation it is written same like a uh, written uh, on submit on submit equal to written validation this validation only we have a written here yes r e t u r n it's a wrong message it's written a written okay now save this and reload it submit wow name must be filled out name must be filled out how it is uh, it's not allowing to submit the data so return validation this function i am calling while when on button click on button submission i am calling this function so one thing i have written so next thing how simply take a copy hit enter change the variable of uh, y and uh, email must be filled that's it email must be filled that's it go over save it reload the form and submit name must be filled once it is done something it is entered submit email must be filled if it is entered the email submit you are like uh, here in html5 it is a email if you are type given automatically it will be accept only emails that validation is also done by yourself that a help the modern browsers will help in that way also while well, submit then only the form will acceptable very accurately so this is the on submission validations using javascript very simply using if else statements and uh, making how you are going to deal with the java html elements to controlling javascript you will be if you done so far lectures this is a very simple concept yours i hope so we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how to validate input numeric values so let's check with by creating a simple form in html we'll see here form tag 
open and end now we are going to writing inside something phone number you may take and uh, here we need to write like uh, input type it's an art text or number also you can take directly okay text or number if you are taken like a, a number only it will accept the numbers in javascript entry point unexpectedly if any other uh, things are uh, not going to be permit okay so input type text i am taken very simply we have given so we need like uh, one uh, this one no uh, button so input type button name instead of name we can take a value as submit now i am going to implementing a function called num valid is num valid maybe you may think it about yourself okay let uh, we need to take the input from the let we need to take the input from the um, input text box so how we will take the number let x equal to document uh, document dot get element element get element by name of this in UEM dot value okay so we will get so we are getting uh, this uh, l e r t we are getting this x the value or not we need to check like by putting this x inside this alert message save it and run the program let's check it like uh, oh action we need to write for the form so a c t i o n action post method and my form name also if required uh, form name like you may write uh, name equal to my val my form name and writing is in my val store now the number 12 i have entered submitted so here we need to call this function no yes on submit or on click also we can write so i'll check it with the on submit yeah on submit return uh in um valid this num valid function i need to call it save this reload the page if i enter 12 submit alert should become no so document that get element by name in um i have a specified uh, let me check with double quotes no number in um yes no okay save it le n e n t element by name correct save it reload the page r e t u r n r e t u r n num valid function that's correct action post i have specified uh, <laughs> action is not post sorry me method method will use post okay if it is self not required for uh, not required for uh, okay so reload the page perfectly control f5 and uh, something you type so a l e r t l at x we are not getting so this is the string only we won't get so only x yeah document get element just i may take it like it's an id n u m uh, document dot get element by id of num let's check now how uh, it will be treated now okay so the dot oh sorry 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 now the terminator is required no the terminator is highly required no save it run the program 
so 2012 is the this id we have a given something written post on submit we have written so still what the mistake and like what the things we need to write here by id we are accepting let me check here i'll write another mode of this so let x equal to like a document dot uh, name of the function my val my form name this is okay and uh, by pressing the dot num is my like uh, name of the parameter dot value okay let's check now reload it something if i entered submit it's not taken mm, let's change here it's a my form so the same form will be applied over here okay and uh, here it is name so reload the form no so let me verify so let's check here it's a button we have written uh, replace to submit everything will be done now submit so submitting something says something if I am given 23 we are receiving 23 as an alert yes so all we have to make in a concentration which very much required so once x is receiving which the data input of text box which are like uh, which we are receiving able to receiving like a uh, alert alert on x we are able to see okay now comment this line okay comment this line very simply there is a method called if is nan that's it is n a n if it is not a number of like uh, what is that n u m it is an x so if it is not a number what we will write what we will write in a message else statement we can prepare uh, written sorry yes written t r u e okay written true like uh, if not a number what will uh, convey the message to the user document dot get element by id of like uh, something uh, we need to convey the message to the user so with that id is i will put e r r o r i'll put it dot inner html that equal to um, custom message enter number in um only this error i made through here with uh, any span tag or p tag also we can write so id id that equal to E R R O R. Save it. Just check it now. Something if I am entering Q W. Uh, yeah, span tag we have to prepare here. Span ID to be prepared to get an error message. Okay, let's check with that uh, span tag. Mm. Where here I need to write. S P A N yes span yes this span is going to be like uh, id equal to e r r o r okay this message uh, copy yes done uh, yeah save it and reload the page successfully just submit yes 
let's see a yes on submit you may observe here you are getting an error message like a span tag very clearly you are getting a message on fly and it's going on why because uh, so much uh, information i have added over here so it's happening i think so so if i am entering some number on submit we won't get anything if i am submitting some abcd on submit see something is happening like uh, on submit it is uh, immediately like uh, displaying error and it's throwing away it shouldn't go why it is happening uh, in my browser uh, uh, see it's keep on running in the, in the wave only in the wave only we need to write the code okay doc element and return true else return true it is uh, not this one yes 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 here uh, we can do one thing return -E false once it is uh, something is happening I'm, I'm staying the screen return false if I write reload the page some number it's okay something else it's a number only got it so how simply uh, we can get the error messages control c break i'll put here save it reload the page yes asd submit enter numbers only okay i hope you will create very clearly this lectures by validating of the number validations i'll catch you soon thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn login form validation. So how simple it is we are looking, we are going to validating a login form. Let's see, very simply how I am making this uh, form to login form. Like uh, instead of number, I may put here it is in a name, input type text and name it is like uh, name okay error let it be the same id and uh, input it is in a submit should be there and password you may put like name or the login any name you may use okay input type password and the name is you, you can simply give the keywords like a uh, password or psd whatever it the keywords you may give save it and reload the page yeah name and password something is space is here okay i'm not concentrating on the design so let it be see the like a name and password and button button name it should be like a value like a it may be registration form or login whatever it you may put here okay now let's see the alerts how we are accepting First, here it is a name we need to switch. Yeah, name dot value. Something, something like it is a, a like a let we can clarify with the name. And one more variable we have to like two parameters are there. So second parameter it is a password. PASSWRD password. And here it is an a. P A S S W O R D or password shortcut also you may write here clear so it's very clear now what I am trying to do in like uh, I just remove this code and uh, I'll write again fresh code so if if name equal to equal to empty or null if name equal to equal to empty or null uh, by putting our condition uh, name equal to equal to empty string when it is happened when it is happened should get an uh, alert a l e r t alert of the message what the message name uh, must be uh, must be filled name must be filled uh, return return false if not filled by the name return to be false okay 
and the second condition else if else if else if password equal to equal to empty if password is also empty we can check it all right so uh, if uh, there is a no password also we can throw the error and i am verifying here to identifying the password dot length password dot length if it is below six characters if it is below six characters um, i let off um, password minimum six c h e r a c t e r s characters should be there what the message you want to put you can add over there okay false terminate now let's see by running this code num valid the function which is called two parameters we have written something if you want more you can write it reload the form and submit see name must be filled it's a throwing some error so something it is entered submit password minimum six characters login so only three i have given submit password minimum six characters if i am given more than that then only it will accept so in real time in real time by putting these are the server side not uh, server side it's a these are the very purely client side validations these are the client side validations see based on that input html element id we are receiving the name we have inserted here so based on that we are receiving that values and we are going to be working here all right i think it's very simple and easy lecture i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to concentrating on server side all data validation irrespective of the parameter we need to verify and we need to accept the data which should whatever like uh, whatever it may be the data we need to concentrate on common validations in server side how it is possible by doing see here i am writing a simple function for this function name of the function and test test input validate like a test uh, input we can make it test input and uh, in this function which is having very clearly like uh, what the input like inciting the data that one we are going to validating so this is the data parameter uh, data that equal to first what the data will check it see there is a no white space surrounded to the particular data surrounded to the particular data so we are applying directly trim either left side or right side whatever it we shouldn't accept the next first this one validation is required for any any particular input data so the next next one uh, we are going to testing for strip slashes strip slashes and string what is the string this the same data why strip slashes any forward slash less than greater than these things are there inside the which are inserting into the database it's a highly problem like a script message will automatically run itself such a scripts hacker may inject in your database to disturb your database and applications when you are running the php forms so we shouldn't accept such a slashes into inside the database all right and now another one is like uh, this data is going to be like uh, applying for uh, html special characters so database is not going to be like uh, entertaining any html special characters so these html special characters also we need to check and we need to uh, take without having a purity of data purity of data we need to take so this function is accepting one parameter so how i need to apply this function super easy so apply here and pass this parameter to the function that's it so whenever the insert form is uh, appearing here 
so all the I'm showing you like a insert form you want to check with the login form or any other form you want to check and uh, when before going to the inserting you need to do for uh, test of this form and uh, test with this user inputs and you can submit into your data into the database it's a mandatorily require for all the parameters which you are going to be entertaining and uh, like uh, inserting into the database strongly remember we are going to like uh, having like yes one thing is uh, i have re re uh, not forgotten here written keyword is required to uh, throw back to the data that's it form will works perfectly if you want you can check it with the registration of uh, Kelly Kelly at gmail.com Kelly register wow something is throwing something error uh, what is that thrown a fatal uncaught error call to undefined function text input it is saying something so test underscore input so the function is written here itself and uh, something which line it is throwing an error line number seven okay test underscore input yeah immediately we have uh, called the function here itself e e like uh, once the submit is happened uh, then it should accept no so you try to implement same way it will be either here like uh, something uh, it is showing like uh, yeah within the braces only we have added here in this way you need to create a function and call the function to the input text box which data is coming this will be verified very clearly and it will give you an uh, accurately uncaught error call undefined function test input test input and the function name data is passing to here trim everything is same so the fatal error why it is coming uncaught error throwing line number seven it is a throwing something it's saying that it's not available mm. let me if i place it uh, let me place to the outside uh, yes paste check it and go back registration wow yes it is accepted so the Kelly record we need to check. Yeah, place the method. Yes, Kelly is here. Perfectly Kelly is inserted. So what you need to do? This function is a common generic function. You may write in outside the if condition. Outside the if condition, it is a perfectly working and able to. You need to check with that validation form, which is uh, available in outside the if method. Okay. In the next lecture, we'll see more detailed uh, how we are going to be like validating the input data. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to seeing more detailed validation of input form. So here you may check it very clearly. So first here it is a name is there. I'll uh, verify with the name parameter uh, according to you just to test yourself uh, more and more. Okay. So let's see. Once the user is entered and submitted the form, we have reached here. Now what I am trying to doing if if like a EMPTY empty method is readily available. So what it is empty? What it is empty? So these post is it empty or data is there? So empty test I am doing here itself. So if it is empty, I am throwing a user message to that name is required. Echo name is required message. I'll send to the user immediately. If it is not empty. If it is not empty, what I'll uh, what again I'll verify, what again I'll verify for this particular name. Let's check. So validating input will be done. Control C X. Yes, yes. Validation is be done. Like uh, if it is not empty, the name 
it will be like empty is in a built in method in php all you may check it which are the mandatory fields put directly empty and call the post method it will verify automatically if it is uh, empty it will ask you the name is required or else it will go here and verify the input of uh, basic function what we have discussed in the previous lecture it will verify here and it will be assigned the name yes name is assigned here perfectly done we have to check whether the characters are there or any other numbers and uh, labels are there check the alpha bets only a to z characters only how it will be checked again we need to check with if there is a preg match p r e g match yes preg match method is there pattern and subject so preg match ma like a pattern would be how it would be putting a double quotes the pattern we need to write so what is the pattern with the forward slash forward slash inside take a cap take a cap and like a open square brace and a end square brace small a2 capital z and a capital a2 capital z acceptance letters these are the acceptable letters inside and uh, one space also we require so space will be given here and star dollar this is the format you have to place here comma and uh, which parameter we are going to be verifying name parameter so this is the name parameter we need to add here so preg match if it is not preg match means exclamatory mark you can add here if it is not preg match we can right here in the uh, like a not you can specify and uh, throw a message to the user uh, like uh, echo echo mm, only english like uh, enter only letters here enter only letters here you just to the user now a single parameter how many times we are going to be validating you just check it it's a empty we have verified to making mandatory and uh, it's a test we have done for this common test and uh, again we are verifying a to z small a to z and capital a to z and one space so other than any character it won't take if it is not matched it will ask you to the enter the letters let's check with a simple example now uh, kelly we have entered and uh, uh, ben ben at gmail.com and uh, b e n is a password okay register so successfully record is inserting oh great if it is empty name register here name is required so something like line number 25 means we are not unhandled space is there name there so it is name is required is throwing out if it is a empty so how it is so even if i am uh, don 1 2 3 if i am submitting uh, like register enter only letters here enter only letters here the message is come out so this way we need to validate this way we need to validate php forms perfectly so the same thing you may apply for whatever at the like uh, input parameter you are taking instead of a name you can take it you can take it so apply yourself we'll catch you in the next lecture with a great information of validations thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn try catch blocks how to handle an errors in php you will learn with very simple lecture so try catch dot php new form i am created here and uh, php code also i am adding over here so writing here in a php yeah try catch So the form name is try catch okay so it is empty super now let's see 
let's see by writing something else so here i am creating a function so what are the like what is try what is throw what is catch what is finally to avoiding errors in the client side and handling proper code and errors will write like a try throw catch finally block of codes try will be executed at first with the try block exception does not triggered so the code will continue normal however the exception is triggers so when the try block is having any exceptions it will be thrown with the new trigger will be called as keyword of throw must be have at least one catch so catch what is catch block if it is happened any inside the throw block like a try block which is thrown catch is catching and it will send you an error message so which is i uh, will try to write a simple examples by creating a simple function let's see like a uh, function and uh, name like uh, this function is check in new m check number okay with one parameter of in new m ber so here i am verifying like uh, inside if dollar number in new m ber yes number greater than 1 if the number is greater than 1 it is going to be thro throw new exception so throw new exception error uh, processing request to be like a value um what i can give here value must be value must be below 1 below 1 okay so this is the my message so now if i am calling like uh, here i need to re return uh, true yeah so if i am calling this function check number it is 3 let's check save and uh, yeah run this in this way uh, yes reload so fatal error uncaught exception value must be below 1 in some error see how the user is showing i'm sending by calling the check number directly to the function some program example program i am written here for your purpose so something i have written very good now the exception is throwing something fatal error it is showing the number if it is less than 1 the throw the exception it is raising an error so uncaught exception this is also so here if i am writing this in try see within try if i am calling this cut i'm adding inside here let's check the reload wow cannot use try without catch or finally so try i'm using and catch also we need to write what i need to write here like uh, catch exception how we can write c a t c h catch c a t c h catch e x exception this exception we can write e x or dollar e and open and end parenthesis echo if any message is there we need to pass if any message we are getting in a error code so concatenation dollar e implies uh, me get message this is the built in method get um, me me ssa uh, what happened here okay okay me ssa get message so the terminate over here now let's see what happening if i save it and run it so value must be below 1 the message it is throwing something before writing try catch block and writing the function of the code what the message we have seen here some fatal errors directly it will throw now you may observe that when i am writing and writing this function within the try this is called it's in a try block whichever the code you want to write to control the error messages you need to write like put a try catch blocks only try catch blocks only then it will be you will get in a great experience and uh, avoiding user side error messages if any error you may check inside of your coding place once the program is uh, submitted at a uh, production server and uh, user is able to accessing then it will be user will be on panic so try to understand and write yourself is always to control error handling you need to put try catch blocks
In the next lecture, we'll see how to apply finally. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learning a very, very simple concept in handling of errors of try, catch, finally block. So finally block will be implemented at last. That's it. Finally and open and end parenthesis. Why this is the finally is required? Let's see. Irrespective of uh, running of the try block, exception block, or sorry, or throw block, finally block will automatically runs. So any message you want to present to the user, yes, you may submit this finally block and finally block you can write here. So I hear uh, something I am executed and if any database connections you want to close specifically with the data related uh, options, you need to use the finally block to like if any errors are occurred in the try block, you need to finally it will runs automatically and the database connections will be closed and you will get a uh, great performance on your application. So save it and reload. So I am executed. So this one is going to be executing. Once the program is executed, if any errors also, it will throw an error message and it will execute successfully. That's it. I hope you enjoyed a lot uh, about all these sessions. We'll catch you in the next section. Thank you.